The key to this game is you. Showcase your talent. Let it fly, let it rip, pick it, play your game. You're not here by accident, you're here by design and purpose. I really just want you guys to embrace this opportunity and enjoy this moment. Be aggressive, be relentless, compete the entire time. But also take a moment to look around. You guys are the future of this game, the future stars of this game. Wonderful advice from two great pros as we get you set to look into the future. Seattle, Washington is all prettied up. The weather's fantastic. And you've got a bunch of really excited young men who are the future of Major League Baseball getting ready to show their wares here at T-Mobile Park on a fabulous Saturday afternoon. Drive left center, gone! Alfonso Soriano has done it again. Second home run of the game. Marvelous play. So far the play of the day by Cabrera. My goodness. In there for strike three. Grinchy looks like the real deal, doesn't he? That one left field, Justin Upton. And goodbye, home run. And the 5 2 player shows you one of them right there in Team USA is on the board. Mike Trout at the plate. Here's the 3-1 delivery, and that one's got to be a base hit into right center field. Maybe more than that. Trout's got a double. And uh, may have broken the bat, but he gets a base hit. Well, the man they call Tiny has been an offensive machine. And it's going for a home run. Nick Castellanos, a three-run shot. No, it didn't take Javier Baez long to put his stamp on the Futures game. Two-run extra base hit for Kyle Schwarber, who's into third. It's three to one Americans. Peter Alonso cranks this one to left, and that is way gone. Welcome everybody to the Sirius XM All-Star Futures game here at T-Mobile Park in Seattle, Washington. Couldn't ask for better conditions, to say the least. It's the National League against the American League. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Sims, along with Jonathan Mayo and Yonder Alonzo. Glad you could join us this afternoon. And Yonder, give us a taste of what we saw most recently in this future games. Guys who are already impacting in a major league. Absolutely. Look, last year was an absolute beauty. It was a party. We start with Yuri Perez and what he's done. He's been a backboarder to the Miami Marlins. He's been basically the Sandy Alcantara 2.0. Andrew Abbott, unbelievable. 4 one 2 3 8 ERA. Every outing he has has been a quality outing. Hunter Brown. Talk about missing what Erlander did for the Houston Astros. Well, he's been the guy for them to answer Francisco Alvarez. Youngest catcher with 16-plus home runs in the last 50 years. Jordan Walker, my goodness, ever since he came back, he's been producing at a high level with an 843 OPS. Anthony Volpe, what can you say about Mr. Yankee? This guy has played every single game, and the, Yang the youngest got to do it. Gunnar Henderson, oh, he's a dandy. 944 OPS and a slugging machine. Corbin Carroll, how did game-winning base hit today. The alumni group has done a fantastic job. He's going to get MVP votes. And what can you say about Mr. Eli De La Cruz, the showstopper, a youngest player to hit for the cycle in just 12 games in the big leagues? It's going to be a great class, not only last year's class, but I think this year's class will surprise a lot of people. I think uh, that is a very good point. And, Jonathan, take us through a couple of guys that you're looking for that we can be talking about them next year at this time. And we will. I'm going all Jacksons all the time. Now, let's start with Jackson Holiday. Everyone has been wanting to see him in this game, the number one pick in last year's draft, our number one prospect. This is a guy who's gone from high school. He's already been promoted up a level. He's in high A. I think he goes to double A. He's the full pack. He can play shortstop. On the National League side is Jackson Churio, the youngest Futures game participant for the second year in a row. All five tools. He's already at the upper levels of the Brewers system at such a young age. These guys are getting to the big leagues faster and faster. And listen, I don't even have time to talk about Jackson Merrill. We'll get to him in the game. But look, this is our top ten. All six of these guys are here. The Jacksons, one and three. Marcelo Meyer, James Wood, who put on an absolute show during batting practice. This is my favorite day of the year. Yeah, this is going to be fun, and Wood was really marvelous, no question about it. Let's check in with Carolyn Pineda. She's standing by with Jackson Holiday. 
Jackson. A year ago, you were drafted number one overall. You've risen to be the number one prospect in baseball. From then to now, where do you, do you feel like you've grown the most? Um, I've just matured in my game in like, like all aspects. Um, I'm, I'm someone who likes to improve in, in every part of my game, so just being able to, to grow offensively and defensively has been pretty important, and uh, I feel like those are the biggest drives that I made. You're here representing the Orioles this weekend. What have you most enjoyed about playing for this rising organization? Yeah, I think the, the people in the organization are awesome. Um, they've done a great job of, of drafting guys that they get along. We all get along, and um, they're all very talented, and it's been a lot of fun to be a part of. Your manager here, Harold Reynolds, told us you sat next to each other on the bus this morning. What did he tell you on that bus ride? Yeah, just to, to come out here and, and enjoy it and, um, and have fun. He, uh, he brings a lot of energy, and it, it's been a lot of fun uh, to be around him so far. Thank you, Jackson. Now we'll go to Sierra Santos in the National League dugout. Oh. Thanks, Thanks, Caroline. Caroline. I'm here, here with Justin, Justin Crawford. Crawford. And Justin, and Justin your, dad your dad is Carl Crawford. Crawford. And MLB, MLB great. They played 15 years in, in the big leagues. leagues. And he got his start right, right here, here at the, at the Futures, Futures game. game. What is it like, like, like to have this family, family tradition come full circle? Oh, it's, oh, it's amazing. amazing. You know, you know yeah. being able just to come out here with all these guys and being able to have my family here. It's really just a dream come true. And being able just to be out here and just trying to enjoy it and just have fun with it. What, what advice, advice did he give you? And did he tell, tell you what that game meant to him? He told me, he told me to soak it all in. I mean, this, I mean, this is, is really a once-in-a-lifetime once lifetime opportunity. Come, come out, enjoy it, have fun. Just take everything, everything just one step at a time, and then have fun and enjoy it. Last, Last year, you were here at All-Star Weekend getting drafted. A full calendar year later, you were fully engrossed in the Phillies organization. How have you changed, and what's changed for you? Oh, it's been really good. You know, just being able to have... Philly's, Philly's organization, organization as a whole just really just make sure that it really, really just have my back, back and being able just to take me one step, one step at a time and slowly develop and it, slowly develop, slowly develop, develop and being able just to get better every day and continue to work out everything. It's been, it's been, it's been really, really good. good. I'm really enjoying the process and it's a lot of fun. All right, Justin, All right, Justin go, go out there, there and have fun. fun. Thank, thank you for that. that. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Send, send it back to you in the booth, Dave. All right, Sierra, thank you very much. And boy, Carl Crawford, we're getting old, man. This is good to see these uh, guys joining <laughs> in, huh? You know, the problem, Dave, is when we cover the, the prospects, they stay the same age and we get a year older every year. And that's <laughs> kind of what's happened here with the, the Crawfords. I covered Carl in that 2002 Futures game. Mariner flavor in the ballpark. Ken Griffey Jr., Jay Buhner, Mike Cameron, Griffey and Buhner. Uh, Junior calls Buner's brother from another mother. They are so tight. They're so opposite in so many d things, but they ha they are a, a very good relationship, well, and they are all over each other all the time. And anytime you get a chance to talk baseball with them, they're very aware of what's happening in today's game and all the young guys. How about Adrian Beltre, what he's done to the, you know, just the group of guys. It, it, it's amazing talking to all the guys. Jackson Merrill, he said, hey, I love talking to Adrian Beltre and some defense with him. He was amazing. Israel Abanez from the National League. And just take a look, as we mentioned, a heavy Seattle yes. flavor. And you made a good point, Yonder, that all of these games should have whoever the host team yeah. is that have their alums. I just think for me, you, you, you go to a place like this in Seattle with so much rich history, players that I grew up, you know, idolizing players that I even got the chance to play with, a guy like Felix Hernandez. Are you kidding me? Can I just talk five minutes about pitching with <laughs> Felix Hernandez? Or a guy like Adrian Beltre, who's got 3,000-plus hits. No, absolutely. Today is going to be a wonderful day, a wonderful future of like of what baseball is going to look like in the next upcoming weeks. Yeah, no question about it. Jonathan, how many guys do you think might have a chance to what Yonder just talked about, maybe see them in August, the August, September call-up time. I mean, there, there are a number of guys at the upper levels that I think there's a, a good chance that you're you're going to see. I mean, Heston Kerstad of the Orioles. The Orioles seem to bring up a top 100 guy every other day, and uh, he may be the next in line. He's been up at AAA. But even some of those guys in, in AA, uh, you know, Jackson Churio could get hot and end up in the big leagues at such a young age. It, it's not just, oh, these guys are close. They're really, really good close if you look at this NL lineup a lot of these guys are already at upper levels uh, Andy Rodriguez you know just got moved up to AAA not he's been in AAA rather just getting going I think you're gonna see him join all those young guys as as well Justin Crawford a little bit further away Boy, exciting to look ahead. I generally don't like to look ahead that much, but when you have this kind of talent and knowing what has been produced in the previous years, man, this is very exciting. This whole game is about looking ahead, Dave, so yeah. we're going to have to do it for today. <laughs> and I'm glad to do it, too. Owen White, here are his numbers this season. The Texas organization, AA and AAA. 
Oh, he's going to be fantastic. It's 97, 98. He's got a really good breaking ball. You know, he, he's one of those guys, if he can command, he would be really, really good. But, you know, this was the Arizona Fall League Pitcher of the Year, man. So this is a guy that's been in big stages, has faced big-time guys, big-time prospects. I, I'm excited to watch this guy. A group of Texas Rangers, when you look at, you know, what they're at in the minor league system, it is power arms after power arms. Yeah, it is. And he, uh, it's been interesting that he's struggled with his command a little bit this year at times because Fall League, man, he was putting the ball on a dime, and it really stood out in a league that was very offensive heavy. He kept all those hitters at bay, and he does have a legitimate four-pitch mix, and at his best, he's got above-average control. Texas Rangers having a great year. Take a look at the American League defense. What do you think of the Southfield uh, class here? I know Class A was highly, is highly regarded with the Mariners. Yeah, I mean, he's been an interesting guy to see develop, Dave, because he is maybe the fastest guy on the field here uh, other than Justin Crawford. The power really started to come, so he's become a more complete player. Not a lot of balls are going to fall uh, on either side of him today. Beautiful day for baseball. We got a good crowd on hand here. Umpires today. They can ham in all out of the double-A region, region uh, the level of baseball. This first pitch fouled off by Pete Crow Armstrong, the Cubs organization. I look at Pete Crow Armstrong, and the first guy that comes to my mind is a teammate, Mark Kotze. I mean, this is a guy that he, he's got all the tools. He's got the speed. He's got the pure hitting power. Class A takes care of this. Oh, that's fun. That was easy, huh? Yeah, he makes it. He makes it look really easy. And yeah, when you have plus plus speed and good instincts in the oh, outfield, um, that was center fielder to center fielder right there. Because Pico Armstrong is the same kind of player, uh, and you're going to see him play some some D uh, as well. Really exciting cup coming up in the future. Up next, Jonathan Lawler from the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's a shortstop, Texas boy, big kid, two six two, buck ninety. They grow the shortstops big now, Dave, and yeah. uh, it's funny because he, do, he, he doesn't play big necessarily because he's, he's hit first. He's got such a good approach. I talked to him a little bit about his struggles early in double-A this year yonder, and you, you have to go through them to get to the big leagues. Yeah, I watch him right now, and this is a guy that's been moved up in the ranks fairly quickly. I mean, a guy who, who started in rookie ball and worked his way up quickly to low-A, high-A, now obviously in double-A, but you know, one of those guys who... He was a Futures game participant last year as yep. well. But you look at him, and it just reminds you of a guy like Royce Lewis, a guy with when he gets a little bit of strength, when he kind of gets that body to go, he, he's going Tag. to be a very dangerous no. player. And by the way, we have the pitch clock. We're going seven innings, one loser draw. Yes, so full seven. And full seven and automatic uh, balls and strike systems. Is, I can't is wait for use. that one. That's, that's going to be the, the, the one I can't wait for. And tell me this, uh, strategically, when do you best recommend well, that I think, you go to? It? I would think for a game like this, it's a little bit more on a neutral side, like, right? Like, it doesn't really matter the score of the game. So it, you're not trying to win. You only get, you know, you only get two two chances. But you know, this is a guy right here you talked about, huh? Jackson Churios, number three prospect. Yeah, and you could make an argument that he could be the number one prospect. I mean, it's just crazy how young these guys are. Another Ball guy down. at you know the higher levels of the of the minor leagues already. Little baby Acuna. Oh, uh, I like that one. Yeah. You, you like your well, comps, I know. Man, you I like I, to know, drop the I comps. enjoy him. I, I like to watch him. I, I want the viewer to kind of feel what they're watching right now. No, I love it because I hate him. So that's why we <laughs> work so well together. Oh, look at that play. Nice play by Meyer. Throws over in time. One, two, three. Goes to the National League. Take a look at the American League after this timeout from Seattle at T-Mobile Park. Okay. EP, MLB VR, uh -huh. MLB Next. Major League Baseball partners with T-Mobile and its game-changing 5G network to bring innovation to the game. And during today's Sirius XM All-Star yeah. Futures game, you will see something new as we showcase a modified version of the automated balls and strike system powered by T-Mobile 5G. Automated balls and strikes, or ABS, is a system currently being tested in the minor leagues to call balls and strikes by using cameras stationed throughout the ballpark to determine the precise location of a pitch. With today's ABS challenge format the home plate umpire calls balls and strikes himself but each team will be awarded two pitch challenges 
Pitch challenges can only come from the pitcher, catcher, or hitter and are triggered by the tap of their helmet or cap. Keep an eye on the scoreboard to see the result of a challenge. Throughout today's game, T-Mobile's 5G network will provide a secure, ultra-reliable, low-latent connection for the ABS system to receive accurate pitch locations in real time. For the most important calls in the game, MLB trusts T-Mobile, America's leader in 5G. Welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, here to T-Mobile Park in Seattle. Dave Sims, Jonathan Mayo, and Yonder Alonzo with you, along with Car Kevin Pineda and Sierra Santos. And here's a look at the American League lineup. Harry Ford's going to get a big ovation here, a top prospect with the Seattle Mariners. That's going to be interesting watching him here today. Made some international news with his World Baseball Classic performance, but uh, a lot of good talent up here. Junior Caminero is a guy who just went Exciting. bonkers in BP. I think a lot of people haven't seen him. It's one of the things that's the best about this game is a guy like that being able to showcase his skills. Ball that's outside. Phillies Mick Abel on the mound. Yeah, I mean, the, the Phillies went back-to-back -back with high school pitchers. Uh, Andrew Painter's hurt, but uh, Mick Abel has made it up to double-A. It's really a matter of command for him because the stuff is all there. I mean, it's a plus-plus fastball. The slider can be plus at times, but he throws a distinct curve and change-up. It's just harnessing it and finding the strike zone consistently enough. Sometimes it's just trusting that his stuff is good enough foul, 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 uh, foul, and foul, not really trying foul, to be too cute. You know, just trust that you're going to get hitters out and go right after guys. Local kid from the Pacific Northwest. Right down the road, not too far, a couple hours down the road to Portland. The count is one and two. Jonathan Classe, the Mariners, way upstairs, two and two. Well, that's an easy 99, huh? Yeah, he, uh, he he doesn't mess around with velocity. It's, it's That's why you're like, oh, he's got a, he's a chance. And he can hold that velocity deep into starts. No, no, no. Three. Right, three called. Let's say rung up. Yeah, you, look, you look at a guy that's going 99 miles an hour on a 2-2 two -two count right there, snapping a, a hook right there. It's just not fair, right? You don't know much about these guys that you're about to face right now. All you want to do is hit the old number one, and when you miss the old number one, well, good luck. Well, especially because he's got a two and a three, right? He could come with yeah. a hard slider or that. You don't see too many young pitchers throw that true curveball. Marcelo Mayer out of the Boston organization. I talked to him earlier before the game today. I said, who, who do you admire your game on to? He's like, you know, I got a little Seeger in me. I got a little Robbie Cano. I can hit the ball to all fields. But yeah, he's trying to be himself. I was like, oh, I like that. He's a young man. It's Talked about how he hurt his wrist last year on a slide and really affected, uh, obviously affected his game, kept him out for a while, but he said he's really tuned in to getting his rest, taking care of his body. It's an important part of development that people don't mm. talk about enough. Look out. Goodness. Counts at two and two. count the Meyer was our top rated draft prospect in 2021 end up going number four overall the Red Sox were thrilled and we're gonna see him bo both him and Nick York could be the future double play combination at Fenway Park in the not too distant future hey a pitch hit up the middle base hit For the American League first knock of the afternoon we oh, not really messing around right there three two fastball 98 miles an hour See right there, middle, middle. There is no shift right now. That's a nice little piece of hitting. Making the adjustment, too. He was a little late on the heater a few pitches prior. You can tell how polished he is, how how, how respectful his approach is. It's an older style approach. Yeah, no, he knows what he's doing. He worked the count there. And, you know, there's a chance I, I'd have to look at the, you know, matchups, but they're both in the double-A Eastern League. And he may have faced Mick Abel before, sure so, you know, he knew that 99 was probably going to come, especially in a game like this. Heston Kerstad, right fielder, Baltimore. 
Baltimore looks like they're going to be loaded for the next few years with what they're performing with right now. And then the guys have got Holiday and this kid. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Colton Kowser just got called up and, you know, they want carry a roster of like nine really good outfielders. And Kerstad, you know, was an incredible story. They took him number two overall, and then he, could, he couldn't play for two years. I mean, that was the COVID year. He had myocarditis, so he didn't play for a year. And then came back last year, uh, was maybe the best player in the fall league. Like, as you look at the young players who, who are up and are coming, Kerstad's in AAA. He can really hit. He's got a ton of power. Oh, his future is absolutely bright for Baltimore. One and two runner goes. Here's the throw down the second. It is not in time. Well, that's a really good jump right there going. I just love when runners go feet first. Yeah. You see it's a breaking ball right there. Not and, much you can do. And uh, Jefferson Caro is one of the best defensive catchers in the minor leagues. Yeah. He got rid of that ball in a hurry. But Meyer just got too good of a jump. Boy. On target as well as that quick release, strong throw. Mm -hmm. Hit him on the back foot, just missed. I think the beauty of, of Heston Kirstad is, you know, he was second pick overall in 2020, where it was a no doubter. This is a guy when in 2020 you couldn't go see guys, right? right. So it, it, it was just unbelievable to see. I know he's been hit with the injury bug of the shoulder and stuff like that, but this is a guy that they're definitely banking on, a absolute pure hitter who can play in the corners. 3-2 pitch, center field for Pete Crow Armstrong. Two down. Well, how about this ovation right here, huh? Here's some of the guys we're going to be uh, hearing from the coaches, the managers, uh, Raul and Harold, and we're going to have a good time with these fellas here today. I'm really looking forward to the guy stepping into the batter's box, Harry Ford, real personable young man. Yes. Parents from England. He's going to be, he's going to have the uh, mic on him when he's behind a dish. Yeah, I can't wait. To, uh, I can't wait for that. And this was a kid who stayed out after his BP group just to watch the other hitters, to study their swings and see how they did things. Athletic, speedy. Mm -hmm. it, it's like a ball of muscle, right? This is a guy who can run. It's a Russell Martin type, a guy who's a, a 6 6 60 runner. I mean, this guy's going to get down the line. He can steal 20 bags. He, he's elite. Oh, one pitch to Harry. And a guy who, you know, there are a lot of times guys like that, and I give credit to the Mariners organization, there pre there's always pressure to move a guy like that out from behind the plate. You know, go play the outfield, go play second base. But he, as he told me before the game, he's a catcher. You know, and that's and he's and he's good at it. You know, there's no reason that you have to move a guy just because they're athletic. If they have the skills, and he clearly does. Oh, that's a good hat right there, one one. But I absolutely, you look at the scouting report. It's a Russell Martin. It's a Craig Biggio style, and it's just a, a, a ball of muscle. Plays with a lot of swag and demeanor. Guy who you want behind the plate that will set the standard to yep. what your fielders are going to look like. Pitchers like, are going to want to throw to him. Right, and I like what you said, Jonathan. Hey, he want, he's a catcher. That's what he wants to be. Mm -hmm. Counts two nice. and two. Nice block by Carroll. Here's what Harry Ford, I tell you what, it's Sir a good Harry to you. because of his parents being born in uh, Great Britain, and they played for Team Great Britain. And tell you what, did you see the video of the kids? They uh, had a Harry Ford mask and the dressing and up the, as the, Harry yeah, Ford. Yes. The crown, the cape, it was outstanding. Two and two to Harry. Pretty firm fastball missed outside. Three and two. Well, he's gone with the three-two heater every time. So you would think if you're Harry Ford right here, you want to be a little early on on the on the fastball. You hope he comes with the fastball. That's you what hope. this game is about. Come on, challenge him. Harry Ford beats him on the fastball, you tip your cap. Well, he did it to Mayer, Meyer. He'll do it to Ford. Here's a 3-2. And he got him. And that's going to do it for the American League in the first. Middle of the order coming up for the National League. That's a good looking pitch by Mick Abel, Philadelphia Phillies.
Tomorrow, Washington plays host to Texas at National Park on MLB Sunday leadoff. It's the AL West leading Rangers with their all-star infield of Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager, and Josh Young. They face off against the Nationals in D.C. at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, exclusively on Peacock. Middle of the order coming up here for the National League. James Wood, the wealthy Mark Tay, and Indy Rodriguez. Oh, the James Wood. You know, you know what? This is a guy who, who I look at, and I, he put on an absolute display in batting practice. Reminds me a lot from the left side of a guy like Aaron Judge. I mean, yes, folks, that is that good. I, I, I remember watching him in the San Diego Padres, and I guarantee you, Scouts in San Diego are losing sleep over this guy wearing a Nationals uniform. I mean, they did get Juan Soto. <laughs> but this guy, yes. if, you, if it's, you know, with the Nationals and what they wanted, this was a guy they definitely wanted in this trade. I mean, well, you can talk about Mackenzie Gore, what he's done, and C.J. Abrams, what he's done playing an elite shortstop there. But they wanted to make sure... James Wood was on that list. Well, sometimes it's that guy you get who's the A-ball player who ends up being the best player in the trade 10 years from now. They're going to remember that as the James Wood trade, especially in, <laughs> especially in Washington. And the, the, the thing, he's like a, a more athletic Aaron Judge, and that's taking nothing yep. away from Aaron Judge, but he, he can run. Uh, it, you know, it, the power is just, the show we put on was unbelievable. The power is, he's still just figuring that part out. I mean, he's super young. Yeah. But he's going to be a very, very exciting player who's now already in double A. So many of these guys in double A at a very young age. As you look at him, he's got plenty of frame to, to add on to as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know, he's so, like, whippy strong. Like, I don't think he's ever going to bulk up and look like Aaron Judge. He's not going to fill out that much. Let me take a look at Will Klein here now in for the Kansas City Royals. I like Will Klein. He's got a good arm. Remember, this guy was a converted. He was a catcher. And, and you know, it's the 96, 97, really good curveball. You, know, you can touch 100 when healthy, but I, I just like everything about this guy and his demeanor, a guy who's ran out pitching in AAA. He, he's not, it's not far off. Ridiculous swing and miss rate. He just misses Ball a one. lot of bats. So he had a terrible year last year. Like, absolutely terrible. So for him to bounce back like that and do what he's been able to do with that fastball, may see his upper 80s cutter. He's got a curveball, too, and he misses bats with all three of them. 2-0. and LV Marte, part of the deal. Cincinnati got him in exchange for Luis Castillo, who's really performing well for the Mariners. I like this kid, too. He yeah. put on another display in batting practice. A lot of swag. You know, he, he reminds me of a guy, like, from, from the offensive standpoint of a Correa, you know, a guy that's going to be, he's going to hit. Like, this guy is going to hit. The defense is where the question mark is. Where are you going to put him? Are you going to put him in left? Are you going to put him in third? I think, he ends up, I think he's settling in okay at, at third base. He continues to play on the dirt mostly. I know a lot of people, they, he's athletic enough where he could probably play center field. Yeah. Uh, you know, they obviously they have so many middle infielders in that Reds organization. I, you know, he played third in the fall league last year, and he wasn't ready to give up being a shortstop, and I think he's embraced it a little bit more this year. He's got the actions and the arm and everything that work, should work fine from that side. Bouncing ball to Mayer to York. They'll get the out at second. That throw pulled him off the back. Uh, one, one last thing on Marte, though. He's a guy that's made some adjustments as well with his leg kick. We see right there, Holiday. Just a bit outside. It is. It started it well. That ball yep. tailed on him. For a cutter. Little cutter. Baby, mm -hmm. baby cutter, baby face, baby everything. <laughs> Except when he's hitting and playing baseball. Ball up. Ball one to Andy Rodriguez. Number three prospect, number 37 overall in MLB. This is a great example, Yonder, of a guy that you, you, you get in A-ball, you're not exactly sure what you're getting. When the Pirates traded Joe Musgrove to the Padres, they made it a, a three-team deal, and they got Andy Rodriguez from the Mets when he was just in A-ball. Last year, he was arguably the best offensive player in the minor leagues, made it all the way up to AAA. Uh, he's in AAA now, switch hitter. He's got power from both sides. 
uh, you know, the thing that he needs to work on the most, he, he told me before the game, is just reps behind the plate. He likes to move around a lot. He's playing first base here. He's played some second base. He's played some outfield. Uh, you know, so this year it's mostly been infield and, and catcher. He likes that, but he also knows that they want him to maybe be the the 1A catcher, and then yeah. Henry Davis, who's in the big leagues now, can sort of share time with him. Well, I over talked the to years. Chris Kemp from the Padres, and, and he he really talked about his IQ, his ability to hit, be a pure hitter Bounce. first. But it, not a question. I mean, absolute athlete, first baseman, catcher. Yeah, it runs pretty well. Runs pretty well. Huh? Yeah. Foul ball by Rodriguez. The runner had a great break. Noel V. Marte. Harry Ford is behind the plate. He's all mic'd up. We'll check in hear what he has to say a little bit. 2 1. Ball that's up. You can see right there the IQ. I mean, who comes to the Futures game and works a walk or, oh, you know, tries to, to realize. Here we go. I just want to try, man. Hi, man. This is really hot. <laughs> a challenge right here. Hey, I want to play around with it. I ain't never got to use it before. Sometimes. <laughs> huh? Sometimes. ABS system. So who called the challenge? I didn't. The uh, catcher called the, the catcher challenge. called it because anybody can call the challenge of the, uh, the pitcher catcher and the hitter can call the challenge. Obviously, Andy Rodriguez is not going to challenge a ball. I ball. love Rodriguez. He's like, really? You're really going to do this <laughs> here? Harry Ford's like, well, I want to play around with it. It's interesting. I'll take your walk right there. Huh? Good at bat by the youngster. Runners at first and second with one out. Second walk by Will Klein. Jeff Person Kuro. Well, you've got a lot of good things to say about this kid. I mean, <laughs> there's so much to say, you know. Uh, well, that's that it, the, the tools are just absolutely unbelievable and the hitting is just uh -huh. starting to come he was in the fall league last year and just uh, it's not often that a, def a defensive player stands out that much in the fall league because you're focusing on the hitting what, what a jump harry throw not in time Marte steals third picked a good pitch to run on there absolute good pitch 1-0 right there oh he had that stolen off the pitcher right there huh yeah big leg yeah no chance I mean, he talked a little bit about Jefferson and what he brings to Milwaukee, the makeup, the grinder that he is. It reminds me a little bit of a young Gomes, a Barnhart guy who, you know, the, the, the defense plays right now in the big leagues. Yes. That's going to get him to come. the big leagues. If the bat continues to come, he's an everyday player. I mean, yes. obviously, he's here. He's in our top 100. He has a chance to be an everyday player. If the bat continues to come, then maybe he's an all-star. But what he can do, I mean, the, the catch and throw, the blocking, he works well with pitchers. He takes great pride on that. And I think the bat is starting to, to, to catch up. Have the injuries kept him from climbing faster? I don't know. There's so much to learn behind the plate yonder for a young player. I mean, that's why, like, come draft time, you don't see that many high school catchers go high. Harry Ford is is kind of an exception to that rule. Correct. But it can. It, there's a lot back there that you have to learn. It's not just hit your way up, mm -hmm. right? That's why sometimes you see not just athletic guys, but really good hitters get moved out, right? Will Myers moved out from behind the plate. Bryce Harper never caught a game after being an amateur there. Holiday can't get it. Scoring is Marte. one nothing National League. RBI for Kiro. Uh, well, then that will be ruled a hit because that has some really sharp top spin on it. Very hard play for the youngster at shortstop. That's a little baby slider, kind of cemented slider. Try to do a little too much right there, but oh, man, how did he? You can just see the range. I got the quickness, I got the one-stepper. Nine times out of ten, he makes that play, even though it's you know not one that you would expect. So Harold Reynolds, here at ESSC. All right, bro. Hey, Will. Right, Pitch the limit. I'd let you yeah. throw okay, through it, but I don't think the organization would be happy with me. I've thrown one inning like the past week and a half. I know. That's <laughs> it. They put a limit on you. I can't do nothing about that. All right. Well, my bad, good ball, big boy. Okay, man. Well, I don't have you just hit it. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Thank you, man. I give it to you. I'll if you need it. Yeah, no, no, no. Good explanation by Harold. 
<laughs> I like how he said, pitch one inning in the last week. What, what are you doing? But the organization In the lobby stinks. for another hitter. I yeah, love it. I understand. I get it. one nothing National League. Run on the board for the National League here in the second inning. 2023 Sirius XM Futures game. Glad you've joined us. Dave Sims with the under Alonzo. Jonathan Mayo. Kevin Pineda and Sierra Santos here in Seattle. Ball up. Good pitchers, Joey Cantillo. Ryan Bliss, the hitters, second baseman from Arizona. Joey Cantillo, I feel like we're talking about all the former Padres prospects who have been traded <laughs> now in this game, but he uh, he came he came from them and has kind of added velocity as he's gone along. He can be up to 97, 98. The Guardians are great at teasing more velocity out of their out of their pitchers, and uh, he does that, and he couples it with that kind of nasty Vulcan grip changeup. Oh, he, uh, I think the changeup is incredible, but we look at the trade with Mike Clevenger. No, it was a really big trade, right? Greg a lot of Allen, players. Matt Walter, but yeah, the Guardians receive a ton of players, but Joey Cantillo is a guy. No, he's 92 to 95 with that good changeup. No, his dad loved the Yankees, but he loved Kershaw. He's a guy that really admired Kershaw and what he did, try to imitate his mechanics as well. But yes, the 95 96 is there, but his changeup, man, I, his changeup definitely plays right now. Boy, he is working from the extreme third base side of the rubber, too. Yeah. Very interesting look. 3 1. Bliss this comes up empty. Here. 3 and 2. Yeah, it's a guy with Ryan Bliss. Don't, don't let his height fool you at all. He's a ball player. You know, he's a guy, he, he went eight straight days of June's with an RBI. He did that twice. That's 16 RBIs in, in just a short time. There's a ball player now. Now he can flat out hit and get to swing it there as he draws the walk, but uh, this is a guy who has been having as good a year as anybody in double-A. He and Jordan Lawler, the double play combination there, maybe uh, someday in Arizona soon. There's Justin Crawford, the Phillies, Carl Crawford's son. Him up in a very nice situation for him. Bases loaded. What a moment right here, huh? First at bat in the Futures game. How about it, kid? There he is with his pops on draft day. Just a year ago. How cool is that? Good oh, stop by Ford. Come out. He's a guy that, you know, you look at the comps and, and who does he remind you of? You know, at times I would look at his, his height and his body as Gary Matthews like Junior, but but when you really look at him, I, I feel like he's a Devon White, right? He's a guy that can rangy. really go get it, very rangy. The bat's gonna come, come, out, come and out, back swing. This guy is a pure batting practice. Like the way he was taking BP, it was line to line. Yeah. 
He doesn't try to do fun. too much. He doesn't listen to people who want to know when is the power going to come. Because you look at that frame, he's oh, yeah. going to add some extra oh, base oh, authority. Oh, oh. But he tries to stick with his approach, even right here. He's not trying to do too much. He's not going to try to get too big. One-two pitch here from Cantillo. Got back. Look at him. Heads up. That one was up around 98 miles an hour hey, right you there. Look, you look at him and the way he plays outfield, man, it's it, it's it's his dad 2.0. It's a, it's a quiet, right? His dad in left field played, like, hard. Everything he did was aggressive. This guy, is, it's just smooth. Tough left-on-left -left matchup here, too, to... For Crawford, Sometimes that could be a blessing in disguise. You're so amped up. You face a righty. All you want to do is pull off the baseball. Moment like this, you get a left on left. You want to kind of stay that shoulder it's closed off. In. Actually settles you in a little bit. Flipped it out there. Center field. And diving catch at the last second by Classe. Tagging it third and scoring is Rodriguez. National League has a 2 nothing lead. How about the closing speed by Class A? That's a heck of a play. Yeah, speed plus the instincts, the good read and route. He saw that right off the bat. I thought that for sure was a base hit. Oh, easy. Easy right there, huh? Impressive. The 2 nothing lead. Back to the top of the order. Oh, yeah. We're going to appeal over here. Then safe. All right. All right. Boy, some Harold Reynolds. Hey, man, I, I got some Grizzly bets down there trying to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Harold. I love it. <laughs> Pete Crow Armstrong flight out to center first time. Hey! That's a good slider right there, huh? First pitch. Trying to set up the whole at bat right here. And that's his third pitch. For him to come with that, it's almost not fair. A one pitch. A little bit late. No room. Hey, step on the base. Step on third. Step on the bag. Bay Valley's hey. Jay Buner, Harold Reynolds. Hey. Harry. Harry. <laughs> Harold, I think Raul's going to have something to say about you appealing to that, that play right there. Strike three for Pete Crow Armstrong. He's done a couple runs on the board for the National League. We go bottom two. Ale coming up to bat. Ellie Dela Cruz. Stream every out-of-market MLB game live or on demand and all minor league baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Beautiful T-Mobile Park. It's the 2023 Futures game. And AL manager Harold oh, Reynolds yeah. joins us right now. Harold H, you're up. The first round of bud. Uh, and they're talking to me in the broadcast. So oh. You're hearing the voice. <laughs> and Jamie Moyer. And uh, guys, you know that you yonder? That's me. That's me. <laughs> All right. 
Hey, I like it. Y'all? You were playing for every run, right? Appeal that, that tag at third. Not messing around. Raul's not going to like that. Oh, well, we had to, Dave. You know that? We're trying to win. This kid get it up there. That was 98. Yeah, that's 98, but what about the, what about the size of Lawrence Butler, huh? Uh, but this kid, Butler? Foul ball, foul ball. He put on a display in batting practice. Oh, yeah, he told me about it, too. I missed his BP. He said, man, what's wrong with you? Now, you see the necklace he's got on, right? You got to get a close-up of oh, the yeah. necklace. I said, is that real? He said, no. <laughs> he told me it cost $51. $51, Dave Valley told me. He told him. Oh, soon enough, he'll be real. Yeah, you ain't lying. Oh, they got good this. Eye. Wait, good take, good take. They got this kid at a 2020 potential. I got him as a 30 30 potential. Oh, man, he's, uh, he's special. Look at this specimen, man. And he can run. I love the setup. Ooh, yeah, oh, stay fair. Man. Sit, baby. Oh. We'll watch it. We'll let you know. All right. All right. Hey, in 87, you stole 60 bags. You tell these boys how, how fast you used to run back in the day and let them know, hey, you can steal bag whenever you want. Everybody's got to have the green light, no? Yeah, you know what? Whenever I tell these guys something like that, they go, didn't Bo Jackson throw you out? <laughs> it's like all the time. Uh, how much fun is having this coaching staff here with you? I love it, man. It's just like, like we were all hanging out a day ago. It's so quick. Get through that. Woo wee! Undress him. <laughs> hey, the good thing though, Dave Yonder, is like Klein came out of the game, right? He's got a pitch count, 25 pitches, so we had to go get him, or else we'd have let him pitch through it. But I come back and Jamie Moyer's sitting with him on the bench, just talking about you're in midseason, you're okay. I walk down there, he's upset, and we're like, hey. The Royals have you on a pitch count because you are a guy that's going to up in the big leagues. And that's that's what the, the coolness of this game, the perspective of these guys, they want to do well, right? But the organization is thinking, you're knocking on the door. Yep. I liked how he tried to lobby for another hitter, though. I, I enjoyed that, the competitiveness and inclined wanting to stay out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They all are. Oh, this is a guy in junior, though, La Maxima. I asked him who his favorite player was. He says Manny Machado. That's why I wear 13. But he, he was a guy that put on an absolute display in batting practice, too. Very, very Don't flat challenge. swing. <laughs> How much fun has it been to, to watch him? He's fun to watch, man. Yonder, the, the, you know, the challenge system here, we had to have a conversation with the players like, hey, don't waste it. So Harry Ford, our young catcher, <laughs> called that that challenge on that first one. And we're like, hey, whoa, Harry, no, time out. Yeah, he said he wanted to just see what it was like. <laughs> yeah. <Wanna> try it <laughs> out. <laughs> try it Take out. it for a test drive. Tell him, hey, are we letting Harry go one more inning catching and then he's out, or, or is he out? We got third. There's Tyler Soderstrom. Soderstrom, I'm there. Hey, take hands, huh? Then, How about uh, him? No, nah, he's, he's an electric arm. It's hard to, like, I don't know exactly what he's going to be. He doesn't go deep into games. Um, pitched in the fall league, but, I mean, it's an electric fastball. He's got two breaking balls. He's got to change up. That's why you give him a chance to start, because he's got a legitimate four-pitch mix. Yeah, he ain't getting it. How much challenging are you having right now, Harold, with your pitching? I'm sorry. Talk how much how much challenge are you having right now setting up your pitching for the rest of this game? You know, we tried to script it, but actually it worked out okay because our, our we got guys set up for bridges in case somebody had a bad half inning. And uh, we're still on point, so we're good. And we got one swing man in Guerrero who we can use at the end or need if we need him, he'll get up in eight pitches. He's ready to go, so... So we're, we're saving him as our swing guy. He's our true reliever. He's our true reliever. Two outs, nobody on here. Tyler Soderstrom. The hitter, and right up it, the baby. middle. Base hit. There you go. Oh, wait, Tyler. Harold, you've been around this Futures game now. You know, different. You've been up in the booth. You've been doing what, What's it been like for you to... To, to be in the in the dugout and 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 the uh, sort of honorary skipper there just to be around all this young talent you know on the field total different perspective I mean it is really cool I hadn't stood on a line in a uniform in what oh, forever <laughs> you know so that was different but but being able to talk to guys I, I, I flipped That's uh, nothing 
balls to, to right, guys in VP watch them hit. I mean, it was, it's a different perspective. It's real cool. You can hear Jamie Moore, Moyer with his wisdom to some of these guys down there. I think, you know, having all the experienced guys and guys that your friends and ex-teammates, it's a, a good system. Hey! But it's so respectful. Yeah. You know, these guys are really interested in what we have to say. At least they're faking it pretty good. <laughs> 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 One on one here to Justin Henry Malloy. There you go, good take. Get on down there. Hello, baby. Get on this either. Come on. Harold, it's just amazing to watch, you know, how the futures game has transpired. How about this fan base showing up? This is uh -huh. a packed house. Yeah, it's awesome, man. And the weather here in Seattle was like this. Pick you out a heater right here. Here we go. Stay on it. We're gonna give you one. Get it down. There it is. All right. Take that. Well, Justin Henry Malloy does not swing at pitches out of the strike zone. That's you know, probably his best tool. So he's not, even in a setting like this, he's not going to chase. Mm -mm. Good numbers, AAA in those 81 games. In a very hard park to we, hit in. We need to hear Dave Sims on a big ball call right here. That's what we need. <laughs> hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can challenge no, that. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll take the H, I think, I think you're going to win that. I think you're going to win that. He's going to win it, but if we're, all, we're done. Make it, count. it don't matter. Make it count. Let's Man, see. you want to hit, Henry? You can hit 3-2, he's going to throw you another heater. Hey! Hey, huh, baby. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it, it worked. We're done. <laughs> uh, I'd rather, I'd rather <laughs> save that next one. Next time, next time we make those calls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He happy with a walk. At least I he, want a two-run homer. At least he that. was right. Well, now maybe you, you know, man, if Nick York can go yard here. He called for that on a walk. I'd be, what's wrong with you, man? I need a homer. <laughs> <laughs> Here's I Nick York. Walk. Nick York at the Come dish. On, Nick. Two out, two on. Ooh, swing oh, and swing and Nick. Swing and Nick. Swing and Nick. Yonder. Talk to me. You know when you're around guys that talk trash, nobody talks more smack than this guy. Nick he York, and He's you know, from Newport Beach. you know, goaded him was Griffey. Like I told a story how I had to bunt one time. Nobody's bunting. He's been walking around telling me about bunting the whole time. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, this is a guy. He, he was undervalued, man. Uh, people took him in the first round. They were saying, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" Well, this guy, he's showing up, man. A true hitter. Quick, short swing. I want to hear, hey now, hey now. There's an 0-2 way outside with that breaking nice. ball. He's got an interesting setup. You know, I talked to him about during batting practice. He started doing this in the fall league last year, really struggled last year. He was getting his hands too low, so he was opening up too much. And so this is just a timing mix. If you'll see, he's got the hands directly over his head, and then he brings them down. Let him, baby, get through that. Oh. Position. I'll give it to him. Harold, you and the guys are the best, man. Thank you right, so Harold. much. Thank you. Thanks, Be Rich. well. Two nothing lead for the National League.
Two nothing lead for the National League and going to bring something a little bit different. We have Harry Ford, catcher for the American League, all mic'd up. Harry, thanks for jumping on with us here. Yeah, no problem, y'all. How's it going? <laughs> doing all right. Want to do all right, huh? Let's go. Let's go. Hi, Harry. Joey Cantillo, what do you think of his arm so far? He's dialed in in between pitches here. Harry, what do you got on, on, on Cantillo's fastball right now? It's a pretty good one, huh? On who? The pitcher. On your pitcher right now. Oh, man. Good. Yeah, this is beautiful. It's fun to be back in the passion. Right in the bunch, three and a half stuff. Three pitches. Lawler's done. And strikeout number one for Joey Cantillo. Oh, that changeup. Change huh? That changeup was good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jackson Churio, the hitter, grounded out the short his first time up. I'd like to see him drive a ball somewhere and see, let him show off the, the speed there. Middle's wide open for him. Holiday playing in the six hole on the left side. That's it. Right field. Backing up. Kerstead on the track. Two outs. Oh, we got two. Harry, what's uh, playing in front of this crowd been like for you? Uh, it's been a rush the entire time. I'm just, just soaking it all in. Man. Yeah, you got a good crowd here today on a beautiful day. How's the home plate area, huh? You got to get used to that. You're going to be doing that for the next 15 years there. James Wood walked in a 3-1 pitch. Good rip. James Wood, huh? How about that swing? He, he's just short, compact. For a guy that size, yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy, it, 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 his ability to make contact. You, you'd think it'd be long and loopy and... Oh, that's 98 painted right there, Harry. Good frame job right there, too. Thank you, man. Live arm here. Change on change right here, left on left. It's a good enough change up to do it. Let's see it. Uh. Oh, no, he's going with the heater. Forget the breaking ball, Ricky. <laughs> Give him the heater. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> One of the great lines of all time. <laughs> <coughs> Hurt my throat doing that, but it was worth it. Oh. Put it in play. <laughs> wow. Oh, the shovel thing. What? He made that play close. Yeah, he did. That's a one, two, three, third. National League turned away, but that kid can run. Look at this. You got to love the hustle, love the desire. One, two, three, in the third goes to the National League with a 2 nothing lead. That's a lead.
Make sure you support your team in the home stretch at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic jerseys, caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your favorite team at MLBShop.com. Carson Wisenhunt takes over on the mound. And he'll face Jonathan Classe, Marcelo Mayer, and Heston Kerstad. Top of the order for the AL. I want to see another good change up yonder. Oh, this is it right here. This God. is it. Maybe one of the best change ups in the minor leagues. He's been coming in coming in hot so far, but he uh, it's just a plus plus pitch and he really knows how to use it and the mixed pitches and Giants got him in the second round just a year ago. First round talent. Thus they took a called third strike. There's the change up. Yeah, my, my thing with with Carson is it's just his ability that Guys just cannot pick up his ball. I mean, it's a fastball changeup combo. He's got a little baby slider. But that right there, the changeup, I mean, it's he can tell you it's coming, and you still won't hit it. I mean, it. how often do you see someone double up on a on a changeup like that? It, it, it's such a good pitch. And, you know, you talk about changeups, it's not just throwing something slower, right? It's got movement. It tumbles. There's it's your it's key. not the same. It's no. not just a, a separation from the fastball. It's... It's just impossible to hit. Well, and I think for me, too, is that downhill fastball that he throws. Hey. Is, is, it's not like he's throwing 88, 89. It's, it's 94, it's 95. It's got more. It's 22 years old. He's got room to grow as well. But this is a guy right here in Jackson Holiday, huh? First at bat. Let's see him do his thing. I mean, this is a plus-plus athlete right here. I, I'm so excited to watch him. It's like baby carita, baby face. <laughs> he looks like he's 12 years yeah, old, don't, but don't, don't let him it, fool no. you. No, he, I, oh, not at all. He, I think he's hoping that he's in double-A by the end of the year, and then maybe he goes to the fall league. And, I mean, I, I don't think it's being crazy to think that he's at least knocking hard on the door to the big leagues next year at some point. Which is kind of crazy because he's just 19 and a high school pick, but he just knows how to play. Uh, I talked to him a little bit as we see that change up again for the second strikeout, but asked him, all right, man, give me a comp. Who, who, who do you like if it was you that would, that would be comping yourself? He says, the left side Trey Turner. Oh. That's what I feel like I can do. I can provide a lot of things, the power, the defense, the, you know, the ability to score, he's, run. He's not an 80 runner like Trey is. Right. But, but from an offensive standpoint, okay. Ground ball through into right field off the bat of Heston Kerstead. Third base hit for the American League. Two down, third inning. There's that guy right there getting a fastball up in the zone, wasting no time. Look at this short bat. Look how short it is. Smooth, controlled, yep. a little Gunnar Henderson, lower half. Couldn't do much there for Rodriguez. Trying to do everything he can, but... Oh, man, it, it, there's, there's a lot to love about that swing. Yeah, he's a hitter first. And the, the thing that I saw Rionda from him in the fall league is, and maybe because he missed all that time with the with uh, the illness myocarditis as a, as a heart condition, and they were worried whether he was going to play. Woof. Nice pick out there by Ryan Bliss, and that'll do it for the American League as Edgar Quarrow had ground out in the inning. 2 nothing National League.
Welcome back to the Series XM All-Star Futures game with Yandro Alonzo, Jonathan Mayo, Caroline Pineda, and Sierra Santos. I'm Dave Sims here at T-Mobile Park in Seattle. All-Star Weekend. Man, this has been a blast. We had the HBCU Swingman Classic last night. We've got this game in the Futures today. We've got Celebrity Softball game, and then, of course, the big game coming up on Tuesday, Home Run Derby on Monday. Jackson Holiday joins us right now. Dave Sims and... Uh, and the fellas up in the booth, Jonathan Mayo and Andrew Alonzo. Thanks for joining us, Jackson. Uh, tell us about your AB there. Well, I, uh, I felt pretty good. Um, I never faced him before, but Heston told me he had a good changeup, and uh, he was right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's almost not fair, right, a left-on-left -left changeup in a game like this. But, yeah, uh, I thought the first one was down, and then uh, took a good swing on the fastball and the curveball, and... Uh, I had a feeling he was going to go to the changeup, but it, it, was, it was a pretty good pitch. How much fun has this been for you, uh, obviously sharing this moment? I saw your dad earlier. We chopped it up a little bit, but just being able to be here with your dad and, and, and all your people. It's, it's really neat. It's a, it's a neat experience to be able to, to share with him, and uh, I'm glad he's here. I got to experience a lot of, of all-star games with him. What do you think called him? Blood? I'm on the phone, Heston. <laughs> and... Uh, it's really cool to have have my family here. We're looking at a picture of you as a little one with Matt, with your dad thrown to you back in 2007, right now. I can't hear you guys right now if you're asking a question. <laughs> All right, how about now? Now I can. Yeah, we, we were looking at a picture of you from the 2007 World Series with your dad throwing to you. Yep. You know what? It, you still have the the same face, man. <laughs> yeah, You're only swing. two years old. Similar swing, too? Similar swing. <laughs> well, Jackson, I want to give you a second to uh, brag about your brother. And I heard uh, a story that Junior Griffey came up to your dad and said, so what's it like to be the third best holiday in the family? Yeah, Ethan is uh, very, very talented. And um, he's had a, had a good summer so far, and um, I'm excited to see him uh, tomorrow. So I get to go home for a few days and uh, maybe hit a little bit with him and um, just get to be around him. Uh, he's very, very talented, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next few years of watching him do his thing and hopefully get drafted very high. How much fun is this for you to watch? You know, Griffey's on, in your dugout right now, Buner, Valley, Kent, Mike Cameron. How much fun is that? It's really neat to be able to watch these guys. Um, I watched them last year whenever I was about to get drafted, and now to be able to share the field with some of them is, is really, really neat. And uh, I've been lucky enough to be able to play against some of them and, uh, this year during the season, and um, they're very, very talented. It's a really, really cool experience. Does, does it seem strange, Jackson? I mean, it was just a year ago that you heard, got, you heard your name called and knew you were going to start your, your pro career to, to be in a setting like this just a year later. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy to think about. Uh, a year ago, I was sitting at home waiting to, to the, for the draft, and um, to, be able, to be here, is, it's quite a blessing to what has happened in, in a year. Who have you met who's uh, really intrigued you, maybe from the other side? Um, Marcelo and uh, Nick York have been uh, pretty awesome. Um, really cool guys, and I'm um, looking forward to playing against them for, for a long time in the, in the AL East. So it's pretty cool to get to know these guys that we'll be competing against for, for many years. First that good arm, a little offline, but boy. It's a rare tag up right there. Yep. Fly ball to right with one out. He, I mean, you got to be 100% sure. He fake steal. Watch this scenario here. Kind of reading the outfielder going back. Kind of catches it with a pretty good. His arm strength and, and, just wasn't and, and on the line, arm yeah. strength. The you know everything was there, but just too much speed. Uh, Jackson, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Marcelo and uh, and Nick. And they're, you know, they're a level ahead of where you're at now. Do you see you've been able to pick their brain and, you know, a lot of these guys at the upper levels, I know that you're hoping to get there sooner rather than later. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my goal is to, to move up as fast as possible and uh, double A is the, the next step. And, um, yeah, we'll be playing against each other hopefully by the, by the end of the year. Unless they get bumped up to triple A, then you're out of luck. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> What's, uh, I just want to ask quick, you know, the Orioles organization, you know, all these young guys getting called up to the big leagues. You've got Heston there with you. He's probably next. 
Uh, how, how exciting, how much trickle down is there for the guys, even where you are in Aberdeen, just knowing that what what the Orioles have brewing now with all this young talent and that, that you're going to be part of that, that next wave pretty soon. Yeah, it's really neat. we got a bunch of really talented guys. Uh, throughout the organization and then Aberdeen we, we've been playing pretty well lately. We've got some pretty good hitters So it's, it's a lot of fun to, to be a part of such a talented organization and um, A bunch of really good guys. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. Hey Jackson. Thanks for your time Ed. Good luck moving forward. Thanks so much. That's yeah, tough. thank you. And right, you're welcome to nothing National League. NBC Sports Championship season. Move by Pods continues with the Tour de France. Stage 8 is tomorrow at 7 a.m. Eastern on Peacock. Back here in Seattle, the 2023 Futures game. And you want to see some really high heat here. Jacob Mizorowski on the mound, the great hander. Oh, this got ride. And it's 101 and easy right 101. Go. This is StatCast brought to you in part by Google Cloud. I mean, you can see the difference of 101 miles an hour to his MLB average at 94. I mean, this is bringing it right now and with a little bit of shadows. Good luck. Yeah. And it's not a straight fastball yonder. It's there's there's sink. There's I mean, it's it's just kind of nuts. If he if he can throw enough strikes, he has a chance to be a, an impactful pitcher. It's 13 Ks through nine per nine. You can tell how, how high that is. But even his fastball slider combo, I, I think his slider is just as good as his fastball, and it's only getting better. Raul Abundis joins us right now, National League manager. Raul, how's it look? what's it like being in the one chair, managing a ball club here today? Phenomenal when you have this type of talent and ability that we have on our club. But it's a, it's a great, great opportunity to get to know some of the uh, – our next generation, these stars that we have in this dugout on both dugouts, and uh, it's, it's really just tremendous. How about how about this guy in Mezorowski, huh? 101 miles an hour with that filthy slider. He, he, it, it looks like he can play, he can pitch right now in Milwaukee. This, he, this this stuff that we're seeing right here, I think that he's we're going to see this guy in the major leagues very very soon. That's a really well above average fastball with serious ride. It's electric even from the dugout to watch with a real breaking ball. And these shadows are not going to help. <laughs> no. Not at all. Not at all. Bro, well, before the game, we were talking about, you know, you don't get to impact these these young players for very long. But can you talk a little bit about what you're trying to tell me? You mentioned a guy like Jacob Misarowski, who's not at the top of our top 100 or anything. These are guys who are going to get there soon. What are you hoping that you, they can take with them in their time with you? I, I hope that they take some confidence, um, you know, getting the, on the mound here and getting on this stage and performing against... Uh, you know the best players best young players in the world and, and to be able to do what he's doing right now is pound the strike zone and really kind of overwhelming stuff um, you know you would hope that he takes the confidence with him to go and, and dominate uh, when he goes back to his club and, and gets after it and you know be in Milwaukee soon enough well we can talk about Mizorowski a lot but man Cole Keith you know he was the last pick in the 2020 draft this is a dude a 21 year old I like this kid man it's good defense 
he's killing it right now at a 336 mark in his league. You know, it reminds me a lot of just a young bat, just not trying to do too much. A lot of power in there. Kind of an underscouted guy, once again, on a 2020 draft class that not that many people got to see. Developing me more power as he goes. I love everything about this kid and, and, and everything he brings to the table. Yeah, there's a lot of upside. It's clear and it's evident that there's a lot of upside in this kid. It's a really good hitting right there. That's good hitting. Good bat path gets you flares, soft flare base hits. It's a line drive in the box score, though, right, Ronald? That's right. It's yeah. good hitting. It's good hitting. Hey, Ronald, talk to me about this staff that you guys have as, as we take a look here at the replay of that swing from Keith and, and his base hit. But, you know, the, the, the staff you guys have with Felix Hernandez and, you know, Adrian Beltre, the guys, how have they embodied that? Yeah, these guys are just phenomenal. Not just tremendous players and, and future Hall of Famers in, in Adrian and Felix, but also uh, Hall of Fame high character individuals. And, and they're, they're really embracing the opportunity to get around these young men. Um, and, and it's a limited amount of time that we have with them. But uh, what an experience for on both sides for us to get to know the next young stars in the game and for these guys to get to you get an opportunity to pick the brains of, uh, of some, you know, the old time legends. It's a good 12 right there, the coaching staffs, that's for sure. Good this, guy. This kid's heat is ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, he hasn't, wow. he hasn't thrown a pitch under triple digits so far, Raul. And it's only going to get harder with these shadows. I mean, look at look how oh, late this. ride, too. And it's got ride, it's got spin. Oh, my goodness. Good luck. I'm going I'm to duck my head, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's in my octane stuff. <laughs> I understand. Doesn't, doesn't want to make you grab a bat and get back out there, I would think. <laughs> Not at no. all. <laughs> no. Pure, unadulterated heat. Two down. How about this fan base, huh? It's a packed house. Everybody's really engaged. How much fun has this been for, for you just to be here in Seattle at home? Yeah, Yonder, it's been such a blast to get to see both sides, both of the coaching staffs. These guys are, have all, you know, mentored myself personally, but also each other, just uh, really high quality people. And for the fan base, uh, just to be able to electrify them, that they can get to see Ken Griffey Jr. and Jay Buhner and Dan Wilson and Adrian Beltre and Felix and all of the guys that are out here, Harold, of course, and, and uh, it's just been fantastic. Uh, the Mariners have a really good baseball team, a lot of young, up and coming, talented players, but also made the postseason last year. And, and I expect for them to have a really nice run in the second half as well. Oh, one, oh one pitch here for Mizorowski. Oh, Ooh, he put hey. a wrinkle on him. Oh, and two. It's, it's not fair that he should be able to throw a cutter or anything else that way with that. He, speaking of Harold Raul, uh, what did you make of him uh, appealing that play on a tag up in a game like this? <laughs> Des desperation. He's feeling it. He's on the hot seat, guys. That's what he's doing. He's on the hot seat. Harold's on the hot seat. That's why he was appealing. <laughs> Raul, you also mentioned, too, about being, you know, you were on, on, on top of somebody's shoulder one day. You know, you want somebody else to, to kind of lean forward that message to the young guys yeah absolutely is you know the, the, the saying well documented quote where we've all if we've done anything in life it's because we've stood on the shoulders of giants and, and it's because we were able to learn from guys like Buner and Edgar and, and Jay and Junior and uh, Dan Wilson and Jamie Moyer and those guys and so you know hopefully we can I know it's a limited amount of, amount of time but we can exchange numbers with these guys and if they need anything in the future you know hopefully we build a rapport and uh, the opportunities there to, to collaborate together and, and help them out well said my friend well said that is some serious hey, pitching. Jacob Mizorowski. And Raul, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate Thank it, Thank you, guys. Great job, man. Thank you. All right. Be well. Strikes out the side. Strands a runner. We go to inning number five. Ponyo! Uh, five GBP. MLB VR. MLB Next. Major League Baseball partners with T-Mobile and its game-changing 5G network to bring innovation to the game. And during today's Sirius XM All-Star Futures game, all. you will see that something new fair. as we showcase a modified yeah. version of the automated balls and strike system powered by T-Mobile 5G. Automated balls and strikes, or ABS, is a system currently being tested in the minor leagues to call balls and strikes by using cameras stationed throughout the ballpark to determine the precise location of a pitch. With today's 
today's ABS Challenge format. The home plate umpire calls balls and strikes himself, but each team will be awarded two pitch challenges. Pitch challenges can only come from the pitcher, catcher, or hitter, and are triggered by the tap of their helmet or cap. Keep an eye on the scoreboard to see the result of a challenge. Throughout today's game, T-Mobile's 5G network will provide a secure, ultra-reliable, low-latent connection for the ABS system to receive accurate pitch locations in real time. For the most important calls in the game, MLB trusts T-Mobile, America's leader in 5G. We're back, We're back with Nas, Nas Nunez, Nunez. Yeah, and, and you said that there was an adjustment period coming into pro ball. ball. You, you said your older teammates and your coaches, your coaches really, really helped you along. You along. How has this future's, future's game also helped you along? The game, the game is just showing me that baseball's baseball is just, just baseball. baseball. It's just more people watching. watching. It's the same, same game, game that we grew up playing and loving. And soaking in all the wisdom and knowledge from these coaches and my teammates is amazing. Now you've, now been, you've been collecting, collecting shoes, shoes for a very, very long, long time. time. And you got, you a, got pair a pair of custom, custom cleats. I, we have, we to, have show to show these off. off. <laughs> tell me, tell the, me the inspiration behind them. All right, so, so my grandpa, he's Dominican, Dominican and he, he, he invented, invented baseball, baseball in yeah. He just, he just had, has recently passed, passed away, away so, so I, got I got a picture of me and him on my draft day. And some of the stuff he used to say to me like before games or during the game. And he'd always get mad when I didn't hit the ball, so he'd always yell, hit the ball, hit the ball. So I just threw him on the cleats. What would, what would it mean, mean to him to see, to see you out here today? Man, he, he would, would love you. He, he wouldn't, wouldn't even know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank so, you much so much for your time, time Oz. Let's send it back up to you in the booth. Hey, Eric, great stuff. Thank you very much. <laughs> he I wouldn't know it. how to act. I love it. I love <laughs> it. I get it? <laughs> yes, sir. Why? One and one to Justin Crawford. Swings one and two. Crawford, and then back to the top of the order for the National League. They get the two runs in the second inning. Akiro. RBI single and a sack fly from Crawford. Oh, There's a guy here on the mound and David Festa. You know, it's a guy who went from 91 miles an hour to all of a sudden 95, 96. Really good carry on his whiff. It's a five fastball slider combo changeup. But with these shadows right now, I mean, his 96 plays about 100. Which, which means Mr. Raskis was about 120. Oh, absolutely. Not fun at all. Now you see it. Now you don't. Good luck. As a kid growing up, I would watch the Yankees in the World Series. It seemed for a while they were in World Series every year, and they would be playing around this time, and those shadows became a factor in those games in the no doubt. late 50s and early 60s. Wow, that thing had a little extra carry on it, one down. Uh, you want to talk about a short swing right there? I'm not trying to do too much. All right, those are shadows right there, but it was short, kind of a two-strike approach, and you see him go the other way on it. Pearl Armstrong right there, he was like, all right, I got a beat on it. Oh, 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 now I don't. That's, that's Jones, Spencer, actually. Spencer Jones. What an athlete, Jones. Yeah. I, I wanted to watch this guy. He does not look like guy. a guy who should play center field. So, so six, big. seven, six, eight. But it reach helped him. TV went, doesn't fool you. It. TV oh. fools you on how big he is. Hit on the butt. Smelling a double. Jones gets to it. So Victor Scott with a base hit. Uh, he takes a good fastball right here, 96. Look, look how short he gets to the baseball. There's no stride. It kind of just felt like he just went with a two-strike approach. They didn't try to do too much. Just right back up the middle. Jones does a really good job coming around that ball, firing a strike to second base, but Victor Scott the second. So Watch he, out, he's about to go at any given moment. Already got a big lead, Jackson Merrill. Uh, he, he's already got, I think, what, 50 plus steals. And uh, I, I would love to see just a race with him and Crawford, maybe Class A, a little skills competition. Runner goes, got a great oh, break. Throw down a second, no chance. Absolutely no chance. I got a great jump right there with his speed. Forget oh, it. goodness. Head down. More than not, you want to be at about a, a, a three-step when the pitcher releases the ball. He was at about a fourth, fourth and a half. Another good-looking kid right here in Jackson Merrill, man. Love everything about this kid. Out of Come all out. those guys, they've traded away somehow. 
Jackson Merrill stuck and well, he's the guy they dandy. said they wouldn't trade you know he's got a chance to be a really really good hitter he also put on uh, a display in batting practice and he's not even a power first guy gets better and better as the year goes on really good eye at the plate their top prospect right now is San Diego you know background is a really good background good family or military family he was a kind of a pop-up guy in the in the draft yonder where you know, all of a sudden and there goes Scott hey. nice job by the third baseman to knock that down stolen base Victor Scott the second Come out. Yeah, that's not fun right there. I mean, he, he he had it stolen basically before the pitcher even threw the home plate. Yeah, yeah no chance. That's what I mean, your third baseman's playing deep. And you're Jackson Merrill right now. You just want to put the ball in play. Infield's back. Have some fun, get a good pitch, and enjoy. Victor Scott, second, 52 bags already this season. Now, it's, it's a legitimate speed right there. That's his carrying tool. And you can't teach that. But he knows how to steal the base. Flip to the left fielder. Butler, can he get that? Make that the third baseman. And a runner third holds. Well, Merrill tried not to do too much. Just tried to put the ball in play. Couldn't, couldn't get it deep enough or find a hole. Uh, that's a fastball right there. I mean, 97 miles an hour down and away with these shadows. Not much fun. Look at look at him. They're all coming. Hey, man, you battled. Jack Centurio here. Two outs, runner at third infield back. Swing so, much, miss. so much to like about this kid right here. We talked earlier in his first at bat about baby Acuna. I mean, the loft, the juice, everything's there. He has a chance to be one of those true five tool guys. A one pitch. Come on. Mm. We'd like that one back. It sort of hung in there, didn't it? That's what the shadows do to you, Dave. Yeah. You know, you, you're there and then you're not, right? You, you think you, you got them and you're, you're either underneath it, you're on top of it. More than not, spin is even harder to see with shadows. 0-2 oh, from David Fest, that's swinging a miss. Spread the runner at third as we go bottom five, 2 nothing National League. Two nothing National League lead. That's Raul Abanez's team. Harold Reynolds AL team on a short end right now. Jackson Merrill joined us. He's at shortstop. He's mic'd up. Well, let's, guys. Uh, let's talk. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing all good. You guys, you guys doing okay? Yeah, no complaints. No complaints. Taking in a great ball game. Uh, how you been enjoying it from your vantage point so far? Oh yeah, it's been it's been going great. I mean, we're winning two nothing. Can't complain about that. 
Take me through that, man. You're at a Futures game right now, and the first thing you say is, hey, we're winning, man. That's that's what matters. Uh -huh. Takes me Take me back to where that comes from. Uh, I mean, every time somebody asks me, they're like, uh, what's your goal for the season? That's kind of what I say every time is I just want to win. Because this game ain't fun if you ain't winning, in my opinion. Well, you asked us during the break about your 3-1 pitch, man. You know, I think it was a little down, bajito, a little bit of fuerita, a little, a little, uh, you know, outside. <laughs> but hey, you know, guys wanted to tell you the challenge. What you, what you think about that? Oh, there's no chance. I got a guy on second. There's no way I'm challenging the 3-1 pitch. Oh. Going back. Not going to get it. Base hey, three, three. York put a good swing on that and got a good result. Man. Chill out. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> you thought it was gone? No. I didn't see That's Nick York right there, the third ranked prospect for the Boston Red Sox, man. He put it. Nice, pretty good swing on that. You know, he, he's one of the guys Harold mentioned how much smack he talks. He likes to he likes to let people know how good he is, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Spencer hey. Jones God, at the plate. It. Jackson, I want to sort of go back to, you know, last year, or uh, well, not last year, but when the when the, the big Juan Soto trade you know, happened and, every, you know, every prospect's name come up and you're the guy that the Padres said no. They said no chance. Yeah, that, guy, um, that guy's not going anywhere. What, what did that do? You're a confident young man. We know this, but what did that do for your confidence? I mean, it's a great feeling when you're the only one that doesn't go in the trade when they trade the whole farm, so it's <laughs> obviously a great feeling, but no, it's... It was for sure uh, a little different after that happened, though. We got no more Woody, and Woody and I have been playing since we were 14, so <clears throat> that was pretty sad to see him go. But no, other than that, it's been great so far after that trade. How, how has their relationship been? You know, Fred Yeoman, Chris Kemp, AJ Perler, you know, even Bob Melvin. How has the relationship been for you, and, and how has it grown? Um, I mean, uh, give, me, give me one sec. Give me one sec. Can you repeat that for me? How has the relationship been with, you know, Fred Yeoman, Chris Kemp, AJ Perler, as, you know, after that trade with Soto, how has that been for you and kind of taking you on board on, and on building for the future? Oh, it's been great. We had a good relationship before that even happened. So I feel like, honestly, once that happened, it kind of even made it a little stronger. Chris Kemp and I have always been pretty cool. Preller and I have been pretty cool. Um, Melvin's a great manager. He's one of the best guys I've talked to in this org, and he thinks highly of me, which I really appreciate that. I hear that from a good amount of people, but got to try and prove it here, so. You've got a good amount of time with him in big league camp, you know, uh, maybe benefiting from the World Baseball Classic some, but, you know, is that one of those things that you realize you don't take for granted, that hey. guys at your level don't often get that much time on that side? Yeah, no, that that was for sure amazing. I didn't expect to get that much, but then the World Baseball Classic kind of took Xander and Kim away, so I really took advantage of it. I got as much playing time as possible. It took took as many ABs as possible. I didn't really want him to take me out half the time, but he said he had to get other guys in, so. Fair enough. Oh. Break ball hit foul. Hey, Jackson, who, who's a guy that you've kind of built that relationship with in the, at the big league level? Uh, Xander Bogarts, for sure. I was a Red Sox fan growing up. Oh, big right. Xander fan, so uh, when I saw he got traded, it was pretty cool, but same time, I'm like, all right, now I got to go play with him. This is going to be sick. So took a lot of his stuff in at Big League Spring Training, watching him just take ground balls at short, and I honestly got way better just by watching him. What's the thing that, he, what's the thing that he does that, that you grabbed onto that, to improve your game? Uh, he just He's really relaxed, and he's really smooth in the field. He doesn't try to rush anything. He's always just taking the GBs, kind of like, not lackadaisical, but he's making sure he's doing everything fundamentally sound. So then in the game, if it comes faster, he's ready to go. And a guy like that, an established big leaguer could see a young prospect who plays the same position and think, no, 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 you got to find your own way. But what does it mean when you see a guy like that who goes out of his way to, to kind of show you the ropes and, and not treat you like maybe, you know, some, some established big leaguers might? Uh, it's... It's honestly, it's it's cool. Like, he respected me a bunch in spring training. He actually asked me, he was like, hey, uh, you coming from my spot? And I told him, no, dude, I'm not coming to your spot. I'm coming to win a championship with you. Hey! Let's go, let's go! Hey! Very nice.
place. Great stuff, man. I appreciate your time. your time. Appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Enter the T-Mobile Home Run Derby Bracket Challenge for a chance to win $100,000. Visit MLB.com forward slash bracket or scan the code. Restrictions apply. See rules. Guess Caroline Pineda standing by with Harry Ford. Harry and Harry, Caroline. you are no stranger to big moments. You played in the World Baseball Classic, and you said there were a few moments there where you felt starstruck. What's that been for you this weekend? Um, I don't know. I'm getting a little used to it. Uh, the main reason then was just Freddie Freeman because he was just such a, like, uh, like my favorite player ever growing up and everything. And it's been, I mean, even today, like, even the guys we met, like Adrian Belche or Alavanya is, like, it's been a little, a little bit more of that, but Freddie Freeman was just like blew my mind. Well, speaking of legends, you spent a lot of time just now with Jay Buner. What did he tell you? Yeah, I mean, he's just giving me the goods, you know. He's just helping, helping a brother out, like uh, just telling, telling me like what, what his approach was, how to kind of help me out, how, how to work harder, how to make it in this game, you know. And yeah, he just, he just helping another man now, so it's, it's cool. You're playing here in your future home field in T-Mobile Park. How special does that make this weekend on top of the honor of playing in the Futures game? Uh, I mean, it's it's amazing getting to be here. I'm, I'm so happy to be able to share this moment with my family, my mom, my dad, uh, best friend, everyone that came out. It's It's been amazing. And, and with Seattle, too. I mean, it's it's, it's awesome being able to to have someone have someone like me and class day here to represent the represent the, the, the city so happy to be here thanks so much harry yeah. dave all right great job and everybody's wild about harry here in seattle well back-to-back -back hits right there with the young keo fernandez and and brady house there's so much to love about this kid and young keo fernandez and what he does cuban kid i mean I talked to a couple GMs and, and they, they see him as a, as a younger version of Jordan Alvarez. I mean, it's the pop is there. The slugging is there. Yep. It's exciting to watch for he's, sure. He's taking some big step forward. He's on our top 100 now. Another guy in BP. They didn't get the memo that the ball's not supposed to travel here. <laughs> <laughs> One, two. Oh, this is a guy, you know, Sam Robersi. I mean, he's a seven ranked prospect. Netherlands kid. Basically self-thought. Yeah, been throwing progressively harder as he's moved up, added some strength. Four pitch mix. No, we didn't get to talk about Brady House as much. Nah. You know, he, he's another guy who's best power hitting bat in, in, in that organization right now. You know, I know they got wood, but I mean, James Wood may argue with you, but yes, the, the the power is very legitimate for House, and uh, he, he, I think a lot of people thought that maybe he wouldn't be able to play shortstop, and he's kind of been able to 
move over or around a little bit. He has a chance to, to be a really good big league third baseman now that he's probably focusing there. But yeah, it's the bat that's going to get him. You league. know, I see him, and it was Chris Bryant everywhere. Like the body, the, the, the height, the shape of his swing. Yeah, you know, because it's a, like a lean strength kind of thing. You see the strikeout here. Good breaking ball. It's going to bring up Dalton rushing. Jamie Moyer going out for some words. Pitching the big still, he's 50. <laughs> kind of looks like he can still pitch, too, huh? He taking him out? Yep. Yeah, this was the two Blue Jays pitchers. They were making a trade here. One's going to take one out, the other one's going to get two outs. Little coin flipping action. They had to figure that out prior to today's game in our Harold Reynolds meeting. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a lot of fun. Pitching change here. Jamie Moyer making it. A mound that he's quite familiar with. Josper Zuleta. Zulu at a point. I tell you what, I guess some big guys out here. These pitchers. Yeah, no, that's just, and this guy's got a lot of heat. He threw one pitch oh, last yeah. year in the Futures game, so hopefully, hopefully get a few more uh, to to pad his resume yeah. with here. But it's yeah, uh, it's upper 90s stuff. It's all power. Uh, he's got a four seamer up and a, and a sinker down, and along with the slider. But in a short outing like this. He can just let it fly. And also, this is a big, kind of big day for him, right? A lot of scouts are here. You know, Rule 5 is coming up. He's a guy that they have to think about, hey, we are going to move him up this year. Or we're going to have to let him go because an arm like this, 100 miles an hour, people want to watch. People want to get. There's not, you know, as much as we see in the big leagues, 100 miles an hour is not easy to find. Right now, we're going to take you down to the best of Harold Reynolds down in the dugout and in and around the clubhouse. The double play ball. Did you yeah. think about going and, and flipping it underhand? I thought about it, yeah, after. Yeah. yeah. Any ball like that that yeah. takes you to the bag, just flip it underhand. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. That's just time. Yeah. You know? You know that, that ain't going to happen again. You got plenty of time. You got. Good advice from Harold. An ace infielder in his day. Turned a double player too. Hey Max. Five. Who we got next? So after this, we're gonna go Clayton Beer. And we'll do First Hi. pitch to Dalton rushing. How about that, huh? Did you see that sink at 97, that run at 97 miles an hour. This is a guy too in rushing. The bat is 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 real. Oh yeah. Now there's some serious juice. Good amount of power. He's another guy to put on a big display during the big. Oh man, it, it, it's like Wilson Contreras style from the left side. It's it's bat first before defense. I, I still think his defense is good. It's, he'll be it's able coming. To, he'll be able to stay behind the plate. I would think so as yep. well. Got a good arm, but yeah, the bat definitely is a, a plus plus bat. And he was hitting balls into the cafe. Dave, all, all the way to the top into the upper deck as well into right field. I mean, with ease. One thing. You don't see too many lefties go up there. No, no, no. That's awesome. Oh, oh. Two, two count. It's an action count right here. Had to throw your best pitch. Alton Russian. Take a look at the scouting report. And we talked about the power. He's not the biggest guy in the world, you know, but the, the tremendous bat speed is what generates it. Shadow's not the factor they were a few minutes ago. It's both the pitcher and oh. batter's catcher on fire. They got a fighting chance now. Uh, we talk about that two-seamer he was throwing at 98 miles an hour. It was over 2,000 RPMs. That's elite in RPMs. Bad head to hurt. Ouch. It's going to load him up. 
Take a look at that slider. Just overspin, overgripped. Yeah. Yeah. That's a slider. You know, when it comes to a left-handed hitter, you're trying to take, get away, but the ball has eyes. It's going to nah, find you. There's no way for him to. That was going to find him no matter what. Hop, skip, and a jump he had to do. That's going to hurt today. It's going to hurt tomorrow. Tough catcher, though. Got to be tough to be a catcher. Right it's to get higher here. up in the order. In the ranks here, Nassim Nunez. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I came all the way out of here. We're just going to have a chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, so. I'm back, so. You're good. Back, so. I'm yeah, get a little run down the line and come back. Just make sure. I'll tell you. I came all the way out here, man. I got to get some love. TV love. <laughs> <laughs> Dalton Rush is like, I'm not coming out of this game. Sure. Yeah. I'm right. sure. I'm get in. Thank you. He's got the Penny Hardaway's on right now. I mean, look at him. Kind of chilling over here. Freeze on a line drive. Don't do anything silly. Get into the next base, okay? Stride out. Tell you what, he's got, he's got some good kicks. These guys have some good shoe game, man. Game's changed, you know? It's fun. One out, base is loaded. Come out. What's up? Nassim Nunez is the batter. He talked about his love of his abuelo, his grandfather. Wouldn't this be something right now, huh? Bases loaded. Hey! A one and one. And he is the kind of guy who will see pitches, he'll draw his walks, he makes contact. Oh. There you go. That's productive. Down the line, into the corner. One run scores, two runs, and it's going to clear the bases. I tell you what, Dalton rushing catcher, fast runner, got around nice yeah, and easy. He runs Three well run for a catcher. Swing, baby. What a moment, though, for Nassim Nunez, huh? Taking that 97 down and away with the shadows. Shadows? What shadows? Bases loaded. I'm sure his grandfather is looking up from the skies and really enjoying it. That's how you do it. Look at him go around the bases right there. What a moment for him. And doing exactly what he does is what makes him, you know, a good player. He didn't try to get too big. He's not going to hit for power. He just went with the pitch, went the other way. A defensive first guy, but yep. his bat, his bat's come alive. Base hit one for one with three RBIs. Have yourself a futures game day. You can see he's got the good wheels, too, and there he goes. With a left-hand hitter, defiantly takes third base. Count that, now a stolen base. Three RBIs and a stolen base. Huh. Kara didn't have a, have a chance at all. I mean, it's... Cole Keith is playing really deep at third also, and heads up base running by Nunez. 0-2 to Crawford. Heads up. Out. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a scare right there. Yeah. Pay attention, boys. The 0-2. Crawford batting in the nine spot. Victor Scott, the second, is on deck. One out, runner at third, can bring the infield up close. Got to try to keep it where it is. Five nothing lead with the big three spot on the board, sixth inning. Crawford so far sacrificed fly and a fly out to center. Right. The ball that just kept carrying to left center, huh? Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. You see there the contact skills, the on-base ability, the speed. Those are the carrying tools right now. The power is going to come. Three. Three called. Oh, they're going to challenge it? Yep. I think sure Crawford, Crawford challenged that immediately. Let's see what we have. Automated balls and strikes. The challenge we showed up on Mariner Vision. Ooh, just got a piece. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
beauty of this too is, you know, for the umpires, talk about your shadows and what you got to deal with. As yeah. you see right there in Crawford trying to great reaction. The reaction, man. but it, it tells you how good oh, they are. Man. <laughs> yeah, he got about a, an eighth of an inch strike there, Justin. Hang with him. Hang with him. One of the 108 seams touched. <laughs> Two outs, top of the order. Victor Scott the second. This for Zulueda. Is the pitcher. Scott with a base hit, stole second and third back in the fifth inning. Zulueda's, he's shown a really good tight spin slider. Landing him in the strike zone too, and that's you know that's been a key for him. That's an elite slider, close to 3,000 RPMs. You, know, you see that with the poles and the Hunter Browns. Yeah. That's usually what you would see those RPMs kind of spike up. But yeah, sliders is a real pitch. I know he throws 100 miles an hour with a lot of movement, but sliders a good one too. Two two. Talked about that run on his upper 90s fastball. Everything. How close is he? Triple A guy right now. I mean, arm pure stuff wise, yes. If he can throw that ball, that breaking ball for strikes like this. Take oh. his challenge. Don't play umpire. They're using all their challenges. Yeah, why not? Don't leave him in, you know, sitting in the dugout. Making Hammond do it. was called home. a strike, but uh. Home plate umpire. Oh, yet again. Wow. Good job by home plate umpire. I can say, told you. <laughs> Three run double by Nassim Nunez. And Raul Nunez <laughs> with a smile. Five nothing lead National League here in the Futures game here 2023 in Seattle. Caroline Pineda standing by with Matt Holiday. Yes, yes Matt, Matt Holiday, a seven time All Star, All -Star but today here as Jackson, Jackson Holiday's dad. dad. How, How special, special has it been for you to be on this journey with him? Yeah, it's, yeah, been, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. Today's, today's, today's been a great day. day. Uh, I've really, really enjoyed watching, watching him out there and, and uh, get, get a chance to be playing play in front of this kind of a crowd. And then on this stage at such a young age, proud of him. He's a great kid. And then it's been fun to watch. Your perspective, your perspective watching, watching from the stands, stands is a little, a little bit different, different than most parents. parents. What, is, what it is it like for you watching him play? Uh, I'm just fun. fun. I, I enjoy watching him play. I know uh, how, much how much he loves to play, play and the passion, passion that he has to play the game. And uh, it's, such it's such a cool venue, venue and uh, it's, it's really exciting. exciting. I mean, it's so much different than when, than when, you, when you play. You actually to watch, to watch your kid play. play. It's a lot more nerve-wracking, and uh, you, want, <laughs> you want him to do well way more than you wanted yourself to do well. So I'm proud of him and enjoy watching him play.
you were, you were standing, standing on the field with him during batting, batting practice, and a bunch, and a bunch of people started asking, asking for his autograph. autograph. How surreal is that for you? And is it strange? It is. It is. It's strange, but you know, you know, it's cool. He's a very humble young man, and signs a lot of autographs. But it's fun to watch. And like I said, I'm I'm just happy that we share a passion with baseball and getting a chance to watch him do his thing and be here in such a cool environment and be part of the Futures game at such a young age is really cool. You mentioned him being on the big stage, and obviously he is here and in other circumstances. What advice, what advice have you given him about that? Well, well I, I just, you know, you know I, I think he, he's got, got a chance to, to be around the game, the game. so he's seen a lot. And, uh, just want, just want him to uh, honor, honor the Lord with the way he handles himself and, and, and the way he treats people, people and, um, and, 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 just, and just, you know, you know enjoy, enjoy this because it, it goes fast. And, 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 uh, but, I'm, but I'm, I'm most proud of the young, the young man he is and, and uh, his, 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 his faith, faith and, and, uh, and the kind of person he is. Well, thanks so much, Matt, for your time. Dave. All right, Caroline, thank you. Give Matt our best regards. And he's right. When you're watching your, your kids play, you're more nervous than oh, you were when terrible. you played, right? I talked to him earlier before the game. I said, man, how much how much does your whole family love the game of baseball? He says, Yonder, after the season's over, the only thing that's on in our on our house is our network. Baseball, baseball network. There you go. It, it is baseball all yep. day long. It's amazing how much they just love the game. They want to learn about the game. And they just get better and better. I love how he's sitting next to his Orioles to farm him teammate too. They all yeah. enjoy each other. They're going to be in Baltimore together for a long time. They, they might just be comparing hair flow. So. <laughs> yeah, all right. Hit on the button by but Butler. He's thrown out there. Two outs. Thank you, bro. Oh, you talk about J.P. Massey and what he's done in his first pro season. He's been really, really good for Pittsburgh. The Florida State League Pitcher of the Month. He had a 22 pounds in 2021. Yeah, he just got bumped up to uh, to high A Greensboro not long ago. He's kind of snuck up on people a little bit. You know, up to 97. He's got a slider and a, and a slower curve that's got a little more vertical break. Some really interesting ingredients. Pittsburgh prospects, man. They, it just feels like they, you know, we talk about Cincinnati and, and, and you know, all, all these young kids like Baltimore, the teams, but I talked to the farm director and John Baker, and you know, he was talking about ND, he was talking about this guy as well, and JP. And they, they're coming. They, they're, they've been coming. Yeah, they've, they're starting to pull guys at the upper levels, and that's what you want to see. That's what Baltimore is doing. That's what Cincinnati is doing. Then you get them to the big leagues, and then they have to produce. And in Baltimore and Cincinnati, that's what they've been doing so far. Well, Pittsburgh has surprised a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of people around I'll baseball. Say. Well, they had a run there where, in fact, they were in first place. It's since come back to yeah. earth. Yeah, they had but I look back in April that was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. May 20, they were 20 and 9, a game and a half up on the line. Unreal. Yeah. They're coming. Oh, wow. Sound like Dion there. Dion Sanders out of Colorado. He, that's what he was saying. We're he coming. set up that TV. We're coming. Uh, we're coming. <laughs> we're coming. <laughs> Gotta believe that they're coming. Two out uh, base runner. An opportunity for the American League to maybe make something happen. Tyler Soderstrom, one of the better power bats in the minor leagues right here. I look at him and it's like James McCann, a better version of Matt Wieters with the power. He made another guy that made this stadium tiny. Yes. It was impressive. I mean, the number one prospect in the A system right now. How about this, 37 extra base hits in 67 games. Isn't that something? Yeah. Get a reaction every time. Boy, that's impressive. 101. He's one for two today with a base hit to center and a strikeout. Really good crowd here. I'll say. And the <laughs> lower bowl is pretty much filled. The scouts love his swing, but. Would you think he would just probably be a first baseman? Yeah, he, he, you know, it's funny. He's been catching more this year than he did the year okay. prior. He's catching about three times a week. So, I, you know, maybe it's a little bit of both. Uh, he's 
plenty good at first base. You know, the catching has taken a little bit longer, and at a certain point, it's not that they don't think he can do it, but maybe you want to get that bat into the lineup. Every know. day. You take a look at his home runs here. He likes the big part of the field. It doesn't really matter where where it is. Every Velo, 106. Change way outside. I would think a heater will be coming here. Three, two. Let's see, mano a mano. Yeah. See what you got, big boy. They like to slug. Two outs, runner at first. He takes off. Ball down. And it's ball four. Something might be brewing. <laughs> it's over. Harold Reynolds and his staff right now. Two out, two on. And look who's coming out. Pay a little mound visit. Hey, Felix Hernandez. The king. I know down in Baltimore, they've called their... <laughs> what are the guys that like, yeah. stop time out time take out. a 20 here come on <laughs> this is the king right here come on now i just wonder it must be weird because I, I can guarantee you that when he was out on the mound if he saw the pitching coach coming to talk to him he did not want to see him no, right? no, he didn't want to stay on the mound but... <laughs> good to see felix back in town going into the mariners yep. hall of fame later on <laughs> this summer you hold the king's court there. hey man uh, you know what was. You're, the, you're the king yeah. That was something. End of story. Come End on. of story. A little little chat out there just to try to settle J.P. Massey down after a couple of walks. What a teammate. Keen Felix. Justin Henry Malloy. Two out, two on. Come out. Yeah, I got you. Got you, got you. But Felix had an emotional final game here oh, at T-Mobile Park and had some great moments, including the perfect game back in 2012, August 15 of 2012. That was the most recent perfecto until Domingo Herman a few days, uh, about mm -hmm. what, a week, two weeks ago, came up with the perfect game. Not a fun at bat against that guy, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. You can never pick up his fastball. The fastball came out of the same angle as his, his split. There was right. only a two or three mile difference. It would just get you off off balance, had that hook. But the biggest thing he had wasn't his pitches. It was his heart. Breaking ball. But he had some heartbreak. I call some heartbreaking games where he'd give up two, three runs and lose. You know, with nine, 10, 11 strikeouts, yeah. one walk. Oh, the year he won the Cy Young. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh look, look out. out. Hey, now. Come out. 23. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. 24. Gets two outs and walks the bases loaded. Oh, that's a good breaking ball right there. Uh, good reset right there. Nick York hit an absolute rocket. Hey! He did commit on that. Left center field, base of the fence, leading off the fifth inning, but they couldn't bring him around. A quick dismissal of York with the bases loaded. And Massey pitches out of a massive jam. They're they happy. 5 nothing for the National League. Ooh.
Welcome back to the 2023 Futures game. I'm here with Victor Scott. And Victor, you come into the game to DH, you get a hit, two stolen bags, you look over at your teammates, you are mean mugging, you got everyone over here cracking up. Is this exactly what you wanted to show in your first ever Futures game? Most definitely, most definitely. I wanted to come out, hit a single, and if I could steal two bases, steal two bases. And it, with God willing, it had it happening. So had to had to give the had to get, you know get a teammates a look. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> 63 stolen bases in your first two seasons. You've earned the nickname Swiper, Man of Steel. Where did those nicknames come from, or who gave them to you? Because it's obvious where they came from. <laughs> I think uh, I think the social media social media uh, presented those to me. Um, I know Swiper came from from my teammate Tink Hints, so we always just kind of kept that uh, kept that in between us. And then one day I put it out on social media, and it became it became a little bigger than I expected. So it's great, great stuff. <laughs> Vic, we appreciate you. Thanks for your time and good luck. Thank you, thank you. We'll send it back to you, Dave. Sierra and Victor, thank you very much. <laughs> great sense of humor. I like it. Swiper. Absolutely, and Swiper gets two bags back in the fifth. Hey, goal achieved. Clayton Beater is the new pitcher. You talk about what the Yankees have done in the bullpen this year in the big league level. Top five in the big league level. This is another guy that I would think is, is coming. Clayton Beater. Yeah, he's got really, really good stuff. And, uh, you know, another guy who's going to light up the, uh, the radar gun uh, mid 90s. He's got a really good slider as well. Uh, mid 80s slider and uh, some really really good stuff and of course uh, the Yankees got him from the Dodgers in the Joey Gallo deal. Ball and two strikes playing seven. So top seven the American League won't get its last at bat with the top of the order coming up. That's really well hit but going foul. He's got such a quick bat. Boy. I, mean, I think that's, you know, you can't, that kind of bat speed is going to play as he continues to refine his approach. He's still so young playing in double A. Packed house. What a beautiful day here in Seattle. And again, the shadows, they were in effect for a couple, three innings. That was about it. Right now, it's normal. The only guys in the sunshine, right side of the infield and center fielder and right fielder. Seattle the City has really turned out nicely for the All-Star festivities, which began uh, last night with the HBCU Swingman Classic. Two down. We had the high school All-American game yeah. yesterday as well, so kicking things off with a lot of young talent. And we get the celebrity softball game coming after this. Home run derby on uh, Monday. The game on Tuesday. The draft tomorrow where we'll probably see a couple guys here at the Futures game, an upcoming Futures game. Yeah, as early as next year. Tell you what, Beater really showed a really good slider there, huh? Good Everybody fastball for slider. Not, oh, only, not only is Harold getting everybody into the game, he's making sure every coach. Yeah, they got the bullpen coach Max Wader going out to make the pitching change. Tell you what, we've enjoyed job, being here in Seattle and, and enjoyed awesome being man. with these guys. Let's hear the best of stuff yeah. that we've picked up this afternoon. This one right oh, now. We're going to exchange lines. Oh, we got to keep Let's give Harold the, cla the crappiest one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our boy Owen. Oh, and good stuff, man. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, now. dude. Wave it in. <laughs> I love when he gets an older guy looking at him. Wow, dude. I, if, I, if I had a bet, he was watching Jacob Misarowski. I, I, I would hear, think oh, so. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, yeah, I would we, think so. I mean, the guy was blind. That, that, that was a wow dude moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start using that as a, as a grade for pitchers. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow dude. Now, where do you think this guy is? Wow dude. Hey, it works. Luis Guerrero 
the Red Sox organization. What an incredible story this guy is, huh? Luis Guerrero, limited mobility in his right knee. Oh, guy who's, who was hospitalized at the age of one for his condition. But this is a guy that, you know, obstacle hasn't let him define who he is. And Luis Guerrero, I mean, this is a high 90s guy, can reach up to 100 miles an hour. This guy, double A, has been fantastic. A 1 1 ERA. It's explosion. It's plus plus stuff, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, pure power. It's kind of what you want to see in a game like this. He's going to come in, maybe only face the one batter. And he throws a cutter. <laughs> yeah, right on cue. <laughs> you know, Yankee Fernandez is coming. All right, come on. Give me the premium heater right here. And pulls the string a little bit. An absolute rocket up the middle, his last at bat. And this is Triple Fuego, digits. Fuego, Fuego, huh? Triple digits against a guy like Jordan, uh, you know, a guy that looks like, like Jordan Alvarez, yeah, slugging machine. Power to spare, really starting to come into it. Just got moved up to double A not that long ago. Two and one. I think Guerrero knows exactly who he is. Two Cutter, one. fastball up, another yeah. change up. Two one pitch. Ooh. Nasty. Two and two. Come out. Two out, nobody on here. Top of the seventh of five, nothing. Lead for the National League on five hits. American League has five hits, but could not get anybody around. They've left nine men on. Hmm. After him that time. It triple digits to do it. Last ups here for the American League. And as advertised, this guy has the real heat and a big wild dude moment. Listen to every MLB game live or on demand with At Bat and watch all minor league baseball and live look-ins on MLB Big Inning. No blackouts. Visit MLB.com forward slash At Bat for details. Going into our final inning here. Dave Sims, Yandro Alonzo, Jonathan Mayo, Sierra Santos, Carolyn Pineda as oh, we look at Mike Vassell from the New York Metropolitans. University of Virginia product uh, more feel for pitching guy I don't think we're gonna see triple digits from Vassal right here but he knows how to pitch he's got four of them he can mix them up just moved up to triple A recently and in double A he walked nobody under two per nine that is impressive well this is Mets against Yankee right here and Spencer Jones <laughs> leading off here in the Bottom of the seventh, our final inning. Give, give me some takeaways, fellas, it's from, from the stuff you've seen here so far this afternoon. Oh, you know, I think we've seen some some wow dude stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't want to overuse that. Well, you know what I do want to overuse it. <laughs> um, 
Adam, I'm working in the Mariners <laughs> broadcast. So you can yeah, see yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll take a cut of uh, I don't yeah, whatever that is. But yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's always to me, almost regardless of what happens, just seeing this much talent on the field in person at one yeah. time, you don't get to see it. And Yonder, as you pointed out in, in, in the open, like, we're going to see these guys impacting the big league. We may see some of these guys before the year is over, but yeah. certainly next year, you're going to see Major League All-Stars from this group right here, so pay attention. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, even talking to Harold Reynolds earlier, prior to making this roster and the guys that are here, he said about 15 guys that they were in the roster to play in this year's Futures game are already in the big leagues. Yeah. So if that's the case, we might see another 10 to 12 as well. Next year, we'll probably see in this group class another 20 to 30. But, you know, what, what I've seen with the arms, I mean, how impressive was Jacob Mazuroski? Oh, yeah, I mean, he, he, was, he was incredible. You know, another thing is the class of catchers that are here. You know, I think the future is bright in that position. You see guys like, like rushing. You see guys like... No, Queros, you see a guy like Ford. I mean, th these are guys where we're in the catching department. You know, it has been pretty good in the big league level. I think it's it's a premier position, a winning position, and, and I think the future is bright at that at that position indeed. You know, Jim, that amazing physicality in these guys. I mean, really put guys really yes. put together. Yeah. It just seems like they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, yeah. huh? I think, you know, I mean, that they're all the physical specimens to begin with, but, uh, you know, the player development departments have done a lot in terms of not just strength and conditioning, nutrition at the minor league level. These You have to be ready to play year-round. They, they were playing year-round in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, so if you're not ready, you're not going to make it on the stage. Take a look at all the strikeouts recorded today. Filling up the box pretty well. That's brought to you by StatCast. All the bunnies coming out to make a move. It's a hell of a job. Give me, give me something. Walking, Hello. Aren't you? I know, I know, man. Hey, great, good, right. good job, man. Good job, man. Good job. Good job. I know. Let's see. I know. I, I hate doing it, but I hey, want. Got a punch right yeah, we want to get every, want to get everybody in the game. We got ground ball double play. I leave my guy in the pen, man. So he goes like this. He goes, I got a curveball. And he throws a heater. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he never threw one. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. No, he's straight, dog. How are the shadows? They're all right. Not bad, no. Yeah. No, they're not bad. But when they were over here? here. First, yeah. My first AB was tough with all speed. Yeah. But <laughs> heaters were fine. You could see everything. Oh, shit. So, Damn. Go Damn. Go finish Go, finish it. It. Go get him. Uh, Do your thing. Two -third. Three cutters. Uh, I can open it up to a slider. What do you like? What do you? Here. What do you like to prefer? Like change up. So change. heater. What would you say is your second? So heat, like inside heaters. Okay. Is it already or lefty? Uh, lefty. Let's go away fastball first pitch. Okay. Let's jam them in. You like the slider or the curveball more? Slider. Okay. Let's go, babe. Love the communication. Uh, you, you know, you, he's never caught him before, so he's yeah. got to find out. I was just kind of laughing at the fact that they're covering their mouths, but we can hear every word they're saying. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I always say when I watch guys cover up, they can't disseminate that information quickly enough to affect the game as far as I, as far as I can see. I think it's more of a habit or feature. A lot of these guys are paying attention, you know, from the dugout. Right. They, you know, some become professional lip readers but yes i right. do agree with you sometimes i don't understand and especially in a moment like this and i do know that you know there are old timers that are guys and i i, I heard stories over the last couple of days rod crew huh? tony okay, Gwynn. Oh. they could read every little tick oh, yeah. picture ahead right. they could read the signs they could tell you what's going on but again i there are not too many guys that fit that bill these days. No, you know? no, that's no. All, that's really old school. It's right a little now. old school wisdom right there, which is plenty of in these dugouts with, with oh, the yeah. coaching staff oh, that's yeah. here. But, you know, talk about wisdom. A guy like Patrick Monteverde, I mean, look, if anything, I know this is the Futures game. A lot of young guys, and he is very young too, but he is the oldest guy here in the Futures game. I mean, I mean, it's a great story. He was like a fifth-year senior. Yeah. You know, you don't necessarily expect him. And, and meanwhile, he's like leading there. The minors and earned run average. He changes speeds really well. A, left, a lefty who can throw to both sides of the plate and change speeds, he got a chance to pitch in the big leagues. Drew Gilbert fouls one off. I think for me, when I look at him, the word that comes out is adversity. All right, this is a guy who, you know, it's a fastball changeup. His best pitch, pitch is his changeup, but don't let him fool you. I mean, this guy likes to bite the corners, and he's really, really good at it. Mm -hmm. One. 
Bouncing ball through the four hole, base hit. Look, look at this speed. I know. Look at the stride to throw to third. Oh, oh my goodness. Boy, that was a long strider. Spencer Jones. Did he ever run the 400? Man, he looked yeah. good. Check <laughs> this out. It is secondary understanding. He's taking the extra backs as soon as the ball was hit. I mean, there was no chance right here. Look at these strides. Oh, my goodness. Perfect the way he turned the bag there at second base. And he wasn't going to be any chance right there. Ladies and gentlemen, TV doesn't do justice. He's about 6'8". Just pure length. And even in his base hit, he was, he was running close to 30 feet per second. Which I mean, is elite. Which is elite. Normally, it takes a, a little while for a guy to go. First to third, you really get to, you get to see him going. Dave, you named it. I mean, you said the thing that's impressed you the most, right, has been that, the size of these guys, the strength of these guys. But it, it really has been very, it's been amazing to watch how special these guys move around the field. And, and, the, and the tools are unbelievable. Spencer, Spencer Jones, you know, going first to third with lead sprint speed. And then young Kill Fernandez, the reason that was even close at all is because that was 103 miles an hour from right field to third base. That'll play. <laughs> yeah, real. That, uh, quite real. One-on-one one here. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to Edgar here, Carol, the hitter. Cuban kid of San Fuegos, Cuba. Little switch hitting catcher. Double play ground ball. There's one and two. And that's your ball game. National League wins in a 5 nothing shutout. Impressive performance here. Raul Labanez's oh, I forgot I had it on. crew beats Harold Reynolds and his crew. 5-0. I think this was uh, definitely a good, good time. Good time had by all by these guys. Can we shake hands? <laughs> Harold wants to know. They're going to do like a... I'm going to shake hands and kick the ball. Shake hands. Shake hands. He wants to shake hands. Let's go, guys. Shake hands. Buner. Still in character. Didn't want to shake hands. <laughs> it's amazing. I want to shake their hands. <laughs> These guys are competitors first and foremost. <laughs> I love it. These are all Mariners teammates, and they're they're busting chops like day one at spring training. There we go. It's been a good group. Good sight to see, though, right? Absolutely. Futures game. A lot of these guys are going to play against each other for years to come. Whoa, 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 whoa. Never know when they're going to play with each uh, other, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, so no. All these young players are going. The, you know, the one thing that they can share is they're going through the same process of trying to get up to the big leagues. And this can be a very large stepping stone. A lot of cam camaraderie there. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or transmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Red carpet, get ready for the next activity here at T-Mobile Park with a big crowd on hand here. It's a lot of fun watching these guys and getting to put names, faces with the names, Absolutely. seeing the body types, see how they move. Uh, this is why I love this day so much. Almost regardless, you know, the, the, the performances are great, but you know, I spend so much time in my world mm -hmm. ranking these guys based on talking to scouts, talking to player development people. Getting to see them on this stage and bet. do their thing, like why is you know Jackson Churio thought of that high? Why is Yankil Fernandez on the rise? We you know we got to see all of those guys, you know, even if it's just for one snippet on the biggest stage there is, a big league stadium. National League had a two-nothing lead after two innings. And as we move forward in this seventh in seven inning game, boy, things really started to crank open for him. In the sixth inning, they sent seven men to the plate, and with the bases loaded, they got a big knock. There's how it started. That's how they loaded them up. Hit batter. And then Nassim Nunez. Oh, what a moment.
for him, huh? Yeah. Steve Nunez, a 22-year-old out of Bronx, New York. We talked about him and what it means to be here in the bright lights of the Futures game. The family's watching not only here, but elsewhere. Great moment for that young man. Let's go down to Sierra Santos for our post-game ceremony. We are here to present the Larry Doby Award to the MVP of the 2023 Sirius XM All-Star Futures Game. With me is Tony Regans, Chief Baseball Development Officer for Major League Baseball. Joining them, please welcome 2016 Hall of Fame inductee Ken Griffey Jr. We are pleased to announce that Nassim Nunez is the 2023 recipient of the Larry Doby Award. Congratulations on behalf of Sirius XM and the Seattle Mariners and Major League Baseball. Yeah, I take it. Nas, you just took that hardware from Ken Griffey Jr. How's that feel? It's cool. It's Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your manager, Raul Ibanez, said before the game that he wants guys to leave this game feeling like they are on the cusp of greatness. Where does this rank so far in your pro career? I mean, it's an honor to represent my team, my teammates, my coaches, and my family. So it's up there. Family is important to you. You mentioned that your grandfather passed away a year ago, that he wouldn't even know how to act just seeing you here on the field. Now that you have that award in your hand, what would it mean to him? <laughs> He's smiling down. That's all that matters. Congratulations, Nas. Let's go back up to you, Dave. All right, Sierra, and I love the fact that the award is named after the late great Larry Doby, who integrated the American League back in July of 1947. MLB Sunday leadoff continues tomorrow as the Texas Rangers take on the Washington Nationals right here on Peacock. For Yonder Alonzo, Jonathan Mayo, Caroline Pineda, and Sierra Santos, I'm Dave Sims. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks for watching the Sirius XM All-Star Futures game. And right now, let's look, relive some of the great moments from our day here in Seattle, Washington. Let's go, man. That's a dub. Yeah, let's go. I just got promoted to AAA. Hey, I want to play around with it. I ain't never got to use it before. Hey, I thought I'd try it out. He goes, I could have told him that ball was up. I can't cover all of them. Right. You guys throw 97, probably with ride. Yeah. Right. This swing's perfect, bro. <laughs> Oh, dirty. Oh, yeah, thank you, guys. That was awesome.